you win a gun. <laughs> you shoot the squares when you want to mark them off. That's that's what I'm sitting here thinking. Is it like a target range where like you wait for the to be called? You have to have like marksman it, and you also but have nobody... to be able to hit the square. But they don't check if you're it's like boxing able chess. to own one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, Depending everyone. on how big the squares are, I think I'd be pretty good with that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're recording now. Hello. Enjoying <laughs> what we're doing. There are numerous ways to support the show. We have a baking's page with all of our affiliate affiliate links where you can mm -hmm. buy stuff and, you know, kick a little bit of cash our way or you can buy our merch or you can donate to our coffee. Any of those. You can also find all of our social media links where you can follow us, keep up with updates about the show, or join the Discord for updates and chaos and pets mm -hmm. and food. If you are watching the VOD on YouTube, we have weekly streams, mostly on Sundays, for a limited time on Thursdays. And at Halloween, and we've got one anywhere, anyone else we feel like. That's all I got. So, again, I I should really start preparing icebreakers again, but um, I've been lazy. So, you know also, what? You've had Hang a on. week. I've so had a month. You've had, had a month. month. It's fine. You were on an entire plane, though. Like, what were you doing? You couldn't come up with icebreakers, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> just give me shit. <laughs> I just remembered that I bought this book like months ago. Three thousand and one questions all about me. If there's going to be an icebreaker, it's going to be in here. All right, flip to a random page. Pick a random one. Don't read them, just say it. Mm -hmm. Number 69. Well, wait. Um, <laughs> number 1,434. Have I suffered needlessly? Why? Yes. Oh, my God. Open with that every time you meet someone. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently suffering. I usually do, actually. <laughs> I literally just flipped to a random page, and that's the first one I saw. Sounds about right. <laughs> Have I suffered needlessly? I just want. Hasn't everybody? To cross stitch and cuddle with dogs. That is all I want. Did I try again? <laughs> we all like just say yes, and then we go yes. capitalism, and then we gesture to the world. Vague I do gesturing. feel like every character's answer would be yes. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of yeah. my thought here. Let's try jo something else. Joe might say it's not needless, and he deserves it for some dumb reason, though. <laughs> oh yeah, because he's he's plagued by guilt and shame. Yeah, yeah. He is getting better though, so maybe he wouldn't know say that on that one. Actually, I don't know if he thinks he deserves it all. There's certainly some of it he thinks he deserves, but um, okay. Have I ever gone fruit picking? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. I have as a person. Elena has not. I have on multiple occasions. Every single time, it was miserable. Are we doing legit introductions or just answering <laughs> these? I have okay. already answered. So we, we should. Know, yeah. I, I guess Elena. that's it. Okay. <laughs> well, we previously. Do this. But, oh, okay. <laughs> no names or nothing. <laughs> It's fine if Let's they're this far into Previously us. on Jukebox <laughs> Justice, <laughs> stuff happened. <laughs> Literally, I was writing this recap yesterday and I was tired. So I was like, first sentence, stuff yeah, happened. stuff happened. <laughs> oh did? And I don't even think I took notes. Um, I don't have notes this time. Joe, Joe, Joe and Elena went to the museum and well, they first, met. First of Cowboy. all, Joe went back to the base and saw Henry, but wasn't weird about it. He didn't sniff her, which Roxy, if she had been fully awake oh. then, she would have been proud. Sylvie went off to meet with her fake contacts. Joe and Elena went to try and find the guy who attacked Sarah, or, or get a lead on him, uh, and met Spuds McKenzie along the way, who offered to help them in all of their problems. That's all my note says, is Spuds McKenzie. Spuds McKenzie. I actually thought that we uh, should make Maria's game notes into tarot cards. Yes. <laughs> okay. Unhinged. Tarot literally deck just ever. said ghost partner. That's question mark. Future project. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia also went back to base since Sylvie wasn't there and agreed to help. <laughs> wow, I was on Good. something because I misspelled Roxy's name. <laughs> It's four letters. Uh, I, I wrote R-O-X-I-E. I've never done that before. 
That's okay. I do that. She wouldn't frequently. be mad. <laughs> um, and agreed to help Roxy try and figure out the whole brainwashing thing with Henry. And Elena was taking Spuds back to base to also help. I think help with this or help with something else. I'm I don't on. remember. All I wrote was um, Spuds McKenzie. And Joe and Eugene were going Potato to guns. the Black Ops attack site near Leah's safe house. Mm -hmm. I think Spuds was going back to check over uh, Sarah and see if there was any sort of magic. Oh yeah, the but lingering magic. But while he's magic. at it, he can look at my brain. Gotcha. Yeah, lingering magic on on anybody that's not Faye. Because okay. we know we know where that came from. Oh, <laughs> uh, well actually Sylvie touched this and this and this so you don't look at those things. Those are... Though, speaking of the Faye, I think there was perhaps a mention of a certain scene that should probably be going first. Considering that's probably happened uh, by this point. Uh, yeah. Hang on, I'm not done yet. I have to add a team oh, to sorry. the pool. We got what, 19? We got 19. 19. Yeah, we cannot get 20 shit. team though, because like then we can't make the stupid joke about nine right. team. Team. 20. 20. It's 20. right there. Team team. I guess, but like what, what about Not 21? We can't get to 21 then. 20 one? Yeah, 20 one. Damn you. <laughs> oh, I guess we'll just never use our team as long as we can keep making puns. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> one team two, 20 team three. You, when you get to thir 30, 13. Well, actually, no, that one doesn't really work because of 13. Mm -hmm. 13. Four team. Thir unless you do a 30. Yeah. We might That's have issues when we get to 50. 15? That doesn't work as well. Mm -mm. No. All right. I mean, so we, I would you... hope we've switched scenes by then. Uh, who knows Certainly. at this point? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a mystery. I don't know anymore. Uh, what do I want? This one, sure. I'm a mess today. Please excuse me. Are we not all mess? It's Friday, and we all had vibe. a week. You've had a month so much. You're allowed to be a mess and process things. So yes, you're fine. Yes, that we are all very understanding and supportive of each of each other at TFT. Um, you do not the two thumbs up. <laughs> Wait, let me put on my Mothman thumbs first, and we'll do Mothman <laughs> thumbs. Oh, oh my god! Unwink at the oh, camera. You, I don't even know if you can even see them. They're like, nope, nope. Or just face they're like little wing existence. fingers. It's <laughs> funny. Okay. <laughs> Sylvie. Yep. You disappeared. Mm -hmm. And went to go find Leo. I presume. Yep. To give Leo instructions. Cool. Uh, you had previously agreed to meet at the junkyard and gave Leo directions to... No, we agreed to meet at the Mexican place. That's good, because uh, uh, we went to the I junkyard. Thought we, I thought we talked about, or I said the Mexican place. Yeah. No, the you... staff there are going to be so mad at us. Oh, I have whatever. it, but you told Leo to make their portal in the Mexican place. And oh. then when they asked like where to meet up afterwards, you said the junkyard to do some recon. That's what I have written no. down. I mean, it's been weeks, so yes. I will trust that. Okay. I, I just knew like there was notes. something with the Mexican place. Yes, the Mexican restaurant is involved. It's just where you told them to make the portal because you didn't want them going through the penthouse. Yeah, I did not want them in the Thus did the Fae get addicted to tacos. I mean, That's how we making... control them. Yeah, if we're making money off of them being addicted to tacos, I'm fine with that. Eventually, Make... they will run out of money and eat... have to give us our souls back. They don't have Winning. It. Tacos um, always win. Leo eats so many tacos, they just can't move anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you can't reap souls if you can't move. <laughs> like that one episode of uh, SpongeBob SquarePants where Squidward has a Krabby Patty for the first time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It all goes to his hips. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you can go to the junkyard to meet Leo. Um, 
they're probably there waiting for you. Why not? Just make it easy. I think Sylvie has... I think there's even more tension now than there was previously. Mm -hmm. Um, Sylvie's visibly not exactly happy, but also she's like, er, might as well use Leo, so. Um, You already made the deal, might as well use the resource. Yeah, use the resource as much, and abuse the resource as much as I can. There may or may not be three things Sylvie really wants to send him after, but (laughs) now let's get rid of the all the problems. Yeah, just send it after all the problems. Um, I think Sylvie probably lands a distance away and walks up um, and looks at Leo and just addresses them with just their name, no greeting. Really. They look over to you and say, Sylvie? So, I am, as part of our bargain, I want you to investigate these werewolves that are threatening my team. Furthermore, you are to keep the identities of two werewolves associated with my team a secret wait question does sylvie know a... i don't remember do i have notes does you sylvie do know not about know tony? about tony yet no at this point only echo knows about tony but i mean you do know about lunar ultima yeah i i think sylvie will say i want you to investigate specifically the alpha of this team and goes by lunar ultima as well as no lunar ultima is eugene oh god i'm sorry um scratch that then it's just yeah the the big the alpha is just the alpha yeah so the identities of Watchdog and Lunar Ultima are not to be disclosed to the fair. The Huntsman. I also want you to investigate the identity of. Is it Aroma? Right. Aroma yes. is the one that has the weird fey powers. Yep. And if her abilities are specifically fate in origin, if you can find the source of the controlling magic between the Alpha and its pack, and what it is related to, I would like that information as well. be broken that would be even better okay do you have any initial leads on where to I find think these people sylvie will describe what the magic looks like to her senses Okay. We believe at least some of the individuals within the higher ranks of the pack have are in positions of power within Halcyon as they are looking to take over the city and bend it to their whims. All right. Any other information, like places they frequent, hotspots, other connections? 
I don't think Sylvie actually knows any of the places they frequent. She's never been there. No. Sylvie so, so is probably the worst person to be contracting spies in this situation. But she will say no. I have very little information in regards to this threat beyond I mean she'll describe what she knows of the hunting ta or tactics of the pack as well as and what they've targeted in the past because I think the silver the white stags was what got her the initiation yeah the stuff. initiation stags itself. with the silver horns yeah the silver horn stags hmm. and her theories of magic Okay. Um, she'll very much specify that the magic in question associated with the alpha is not the same magic as the magic that is natural to the wolves. Good to know. So, don't know why that was unmuted, so sorry for the Discord notification that came through it's discord <laughs> it doesn't behave ever well then if nothing else i'll get going um shoot we can't give obviously a communicator does not work in this situation leave a message at a mexican restaurant if you have any information. Should I have them direct it to you? Mm, most likely, yes. Myself. They know who I am. Just a request to meet? Or is there a code word? Work the word blue into I don't know. Balloon is the safe word. No, blue. Not balloon. Blue? Oh, okay. Blue. <laughs> I heard balloon. Blue. It's silly. Of course it's blue. Okay. Expect you to uphold your portion of the bargain. Nothing if not professional. Of course. They have probably been like sitting on the hood of a car and will stand up and sort of brush off their pants, even though there's really not any dirt or anything yeah. on there and it doesn't really matter. And they will uh, crouch a little bit and then um, jump and sort of do this backflip motion and disappear in a little black puff of smoke. Of course they're based off of or something like that. <laughs> Some kind of puka thing that can teleport. Well, I, weren't, I wasn't going to give them your exact power set. Yeah. It's great. Teleporters are great. <laughs> they have to do recon? There's a reason they're an excellent infiltrator. I think Sylvie will sigh and probably start heading back, like, it's part because she obviously broke the, Roxy could be so pissed at her, she broke the- You have Freya. Freya's with Oh, me. I do have Freya. Freya counts as my buddy. <laughs> yes. That okay. was the deal. I'm sure the bike's somewhere nearby, too. Yeah. So- 
No. She'll start making her way back so people know where she is, roughly. Okay. You could always give a status update yes. over the comms. I guess that's true. I do have the comm. I think Sylvie will relay it. We'll say Valkyrie to team. I'm on my way back to base. On a general channel. Um, We'll sort of do some time shenanigans and say this is when Elena and Spuds are arriving back at base and Henry, Roxy, and Sylvie were going to do some experiments and Joe and Eugene are headed to Leah's safe house. So whoever wants to, you all hear that over your comms, so whoever wants I mean, to Henry, jump in. Roxy, and Cynthia. Did I say Sylvie? Yes, you said Sylvie. Yes. Henry, Roxy, and Cynthia. I was, I was, I also had like the name Sarah in my mind and I was like, don't say Sarah. Sarah's not at the base. So I went with the other S name, I guess. Fine. <laughs> so. Does anyone and... respond to that? Elena will. She'll just hit the little the little thing. It's a Roger Vilko, Valkyrie. We are two. Of course. Okay. But I do know that it's... Cynthia has said something about not wanting to be in the same place as Sylvie yeah. at the same time. So And I don't know if Sylvie I don't think Sylvie fully knows that. I mean no. she assumes that, but So would Cynthia um... do anything? It's, it has been a minute. Uh, what was Cynthia doing at the base? Or is she heading back to it? You, I'm going to just play time <laughs> shenanigans just to make things easier on all of us. So you were getting ready to do experiments with Roxy and Henry for the whole like mind fuck. Okay, right, thing. right, right. And right. Spuds and Elena had just gone gotten back to base. So you were all like, masked up and ready for strangers uh the work with roxy is more important so cynthia is going to stay there and uh endeavor to just ignore sylvie when she shows up okay i don't think sylvie's in any hurry to get back either though okay so that's fair God, how is being ignored just feeling so much worse than you just leaving yeah <laughs> It is actually worse. Oh. <laughs> Little shoulder, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> Roxy's distracted, though. So, because I think they put her somewhere. I don't remember. Or was, was I think Cynthia Still. was going to uh, float we, her. We uh, was... cleared out a room. Yeah. Yes. Used for this. And I was going to float you. Yes. I can also float you. Yeah, uh, now that's that true. You're here. Mm -hmm. but Actually, um, if Elena's there, I'll probably have Elena float so I can help with whatever brand well, stuff. So you Spuds, can possible. Spuds is also there. So oh, are right. you gonna address that? Are you gonna address no, that? No, I feel like first? it comes in in the middle of like <laughs> Roxy being floated and like them saying a weird code word, and then Roxy's like trying to walk away, but she's just doing a moonwalk in the air. That's what it looks like. You'd be like. in a different room though. Oh, but it's funnier if that's what happens <laughs> <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> but he comes with Elena, doesn't he? Yeah. Yes. Oh. So maybe they could walk. <laughs> if Elena lets him in. I mean, they'd already yeah. called ahead and was okay. it like, is it always case Spuds comes and that's why everyone got suited up. Yeah. Okay. Why Henry has a mask on. She so. didn't wear a onesie, though? No. She put uh, on, like, a headscarf and a mask. But would you go ahead, knowing that they're coming, would you go ahead and start these experiments, or would you just wait? Probably he's, hold off. I was gonna say, he's there to help. See if he can see any magic shenanigans. So. Okay. So, um, let's say you're hanging out in the main part of the base, and Elena and this cowboy-looking fellow walk in. Elena's, like, over the moon. 
whole thing. Hello? Uh, this is our new, new friend, uh, Spuds McKenzie. Howdy. Oh, I bet Joe really liked you. <laughs> Watchdog. Watchdog, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's from uh, Texarkana heard that we would be needing assistance and sent his uh, proto proto. Wait, the the guy, the Texas, the the cowboy wizard is real. Yeah, the wizard yeah. from. Uh, from Wait the a minute. All right, whatever. I thought you could use some help, <laughs> so he sent me along. Hope you don't mind. How does he know us? I'm, I'm I'm just so confused. I've never met a wizard from Kansas. He's got a good, uh, pretty good beat on everything that goes on in the city. It's but he's in, yeah, but he's in Kansas. But like, not currently. He came from Kansas. Ah, okay. He doesn't reside there all the time. It's just like his <laughs> summer home. Just summers in Kansas. That. All right. A peaceful getaway if you need to get out of the city. I I suppose I've never been to Kansas, so. If you're looking for a, pli- a, a quiet place to go, you could give it a shot next time you got some time. Uh, well, you know, it won't be quiet for very long if I go there and I bring my, like, family because, you know, we're just loud. No matter where we are, so it doesn't matter. Also, I drive a loud bike and a loud car, so I'll just ruin the quiet. <laughs> I'll suit yourself. But uh, I heard you had a lot going on and some trouble with some very powerful people, so if I could assist you in your endeavors... I'd be see what my how my skills could be put to use. Yeah, I got a list. It's on the board. I won't say no to a different perspective. She she points to her list of shorthand, possibly nonsensical. (laughs) (laughs) That is quite a set of problems. problems. (laughs) Yeah. Ah, uh, so yeah, there's a lot of problems. We got a shadow organization who may or may not have brainwashed me. Uh, we got um a uh what what's what's he city councilman that is proposing the bill to make us go on a registry. Uh, yeah, I've heard about that one. There is the sword whip guy who. Uh, has some sort of way to open portals and stole some space rock for probably nefarious reasons. And then th- now there's two of me. That's also a problem. Um, what other problems? Oh, yeah, there's we- a werewolf coup, a werewolf conspiracy. Like a uh, like cult. Werewolf cult. Yeah, that that's a good one. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, werewolf mm-hmm. cult. Crosses out conspiracy and writes cold. <laughs> yeah, we tried to track the sword flip guy, but is there no magic residue up top? The seems he um, absconded mm-hmm. to a He's different reality in a different dimension. Sounds right. Uh, Spuds could amplify the tracking I did on it, and I I do know it is in another dimension. Okay. It seems like very bottom of list because just you kinda... can't do really a lot about that unless you want me to try to run really fast at reality again. Yeah, we also don't so, like which... really hard, really more, more. Uh, more that hard is also based on that where this rock is located. This fellow is a uh, also located. Yeah, there's a bit of uncertainty there. I don't and we also it... don't know if your shoulder check will get us to the correct reality. Yeah, that could have been a total fluke. Also, uh, we did it, like, right where the portal had been before, so there might have been, like, a week. You know, whatever. Uh, I don't there, know what There I'm was doing. a little bit of a, a scar, we'll call it, between That you might have been my fault. Not uh, necessarily. 
because uh, if it was the same spot, anything that kind of breaks Don't open those that. holes can leave a bit of a mark. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it was like I'm uh, thinking whatever. What, I'm thinking what probably happened is that you just had enough force to break that open again. Yeah. <laughs> Rock. But so start singing what's... came in like a wrecking ball in her head, you know? <laughs> a song that definitely exists at this point in time. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> what is currently at the top of your list that you'd like assistance with? My brain. I think that's the most pressing issue, right? I'd agree. Uh, Roxy has had some kind of... Oh, calamity. Redconning that. Calamity has had some kind of... A uh, command phrase implanted in her mind where if it's spoken, uh, she will attempt to return to somewhere. We're unclear on where. We wanted to try and discern the nature of this control before attempting to follow her. Well, that is certainly no good. Nope. We are going to run some tests. I admittedly have very little experience with the magic side of any of this. So I leave your analyses to you. I can do my best to lend my capabilities. I have a wide variety of uses for them. Is there I guess something in something specific you'd like to look into first? With this or uh, if this is your major problem that you'd like help with. Yeah, with this like um where see if we can figure out where the connection is located or like what it does or where it is what it what does sort of methods we're used to, to implant it how to interrupt any of it that or would be useful unhook it or whatever it is and how to undo it yeah all right well probably best to start figuring out what it is first <laughs> that's fair um what sorts of i have A brief, not a brief, um, pretty simplistic breakdown of all of your uh, specialities, but what sorts of abilities do each of you have to offer in this case that might be helpful in this process? Uh, well, my brain is the one that we'll be looking at, so <laughs> not a lot. Unless you want That's me to crush fair. my own brain. Uh, I no, I probably don't do that, but I don't want to do don't. it. I don't so. really know if we'd be able to come back from that. So Yeah, I don't need that, actually. It's a hard no on that one. Yeah. I have a degree of telepathy that I was going to use to try and discern things from that perspective. i just stop her from leaving. She floats me so that I can't walk okay. away. The, uh... Telepathy might be something useful in this case. See if we can't, uh, maybe not necessarily amplify that power, but make it a little more targeted. Get and Henry's just really need. smart. And so, well, it's a code yeah. name. Oh shit! I don't. We don't have a code name for her. Don't. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> Our friend is just really smart. Henry friend? is the brain of the book. <laughs> this is the brain. You may call her the brain. I'm not pinky, don't worry. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, well, we do every just, night. Save the world. Just brain. Uh, <laughs> you may be able to help us piece some of this together. Um, do you have somewhere we could set things up? We have I'll a little set bit aside. Of... Oh, perfect. Hmm. You don't mind if I... Uh, draw some things on the floor do you it's fine just let us know if it's enough space if it's not we'll find something else well, let's go take a look shall we and she'll uh lead him back to the room they've set up for this yeah. I'd say, uh, with the size of this and all the stuff you moved to the side he looks around and nods approvingly i think this will do just fine uh, give Excellent. me a moment to uh, prepare my materials he goes over to the center of the room and pulls out um, 
initially some chalk from his bag and begins drawing things out on the floor and adds some other like charcoal and ash and other materials. Um, I feel like either Hecate or Cynthia is like covertly recording all of this, like study this for later, study this for later. <laughs> Hecate there are cameras know in the base. <laughs> that is true. Um, but once he's finished, uh, Spuds takes a step back and kind of dusts off his hands and says, I think this will do. Uh, now, Miss uh, Calamity, will you step yeah. on over here in the middle of this circle for me? Sure thing. Spuds. Spuds yeah. my buds. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I'm your spuddy. Yeah. Oh god, there's two of them. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Miss Easy Living, if you wouldn't mind doing your thing. Yeah. Start levitating Roxy. Roxy's gonna do a flip or two just because she likes to. <laughs> and flip. <laughs> Alright, and if you're ready. I certainly am. Please, uh, begin focusing miss echo and he snaps his finger and you watch as like turning out of existence is this tome that's just floating in the air and it flips open and several Spooky. pages pass by <laughs> if any of you book. have played uh if any of you have played the um uh, super paper mario it's very much how like count oh, black like turns yeah. into existence uh, very much that that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Calamity, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Unit 5214, conduct protocol Omega-14. Roxy's mind goes blank. Mm -hmm. She starts moving through the air. Um. Okay. Spuds begins to recite something in a language you don't really understand. Um, and his eyes take on a purple glow. Um, and he, for like a couple seconds, looks at you kind of, you're not really sure what's going on. Um, it's just like <laughs> he's just focusing on you and then his attention slowly turns to Calamity and he finishes uh, reciting this spell or what incantation, whatever it is um, and you see his eyes just like moving back and forth across like Roxy just very like obviously looking at something that you can't see um and this goes on for uh several minutes probably before the uh if possible sure I would have I think Echo would have been trying to like listen in telepathically to see if she can figure out what's going on um, like either what he's doing or what's happening in a response like in roxy's brain yeah okay go ahead and roll to unleash your powers Uh, that is only a six. If anyone wants to kick some tea, well, by the way, I can contribute. I... Hang on, tea. hold on, hold on, just kidding. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. I can do uh, the spuds. It's technically helping in the situation. Oh, that's true. Ah, um, so we can spuds can use a team. Thanks. Nice. That is a mechanic that we definitely need to make more use of. If we have NPC helpers, we can spend a team out of the pool for them. Um, oh, nice. So we can bring that up to a seven. So would you like to mark a condition or I can tell you how this is unstable or temporary? I will mark a condition. Okay. Shh. 
me see here. I have some notes on this, and I have not looked at them in a while, so I just give me a second because I make sure I I want to make sure I get all the information right. Sure. Uh, yeah, rules no, check is the condition my choice or your choice? Uh, I believe that's Charlie's choice. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. That's not what I want. There is all this stuff. And you said you don't have any marked, right? I have none. Cool, cool, cool. We will. Hmm. I'll give you a choice between insecure or afraid. Ooh. Hmm. That's fair. I think... Probably afraid is the better choice. Normally I'd say insecure because she's feeling unsure about her ability to actually help Roxy, but considering they're actively doing something to try, afraid seems like the better uh, choice there. Okay. Sounds good. Where is my information? Oh my god. This is fine. Alrighty. Um so you are focusing on Roxy's mind and With the help of Spuds McKenzie, are sort of picking over her thoughts right now, which are mainly just to what you're getting is return to base. That's not really giving you a specific location, but there's a strong like feeling and ingrained sense of direction there. Uh -huh. Um since Spuds is amplifying things, you start to dig deeper. And it's almost like you're watching Roxy's memories in reverse. Okay. I'm like, what has happened very recently? And it's just kind of like reverse chronological, chronological order. Going, obviously Rewind. going, yeah. At several times speed because you're moving through them pretty quickly. And even like- choices and all. Yeah. Even with this process, it's like you can still kind of comprehend what's going by you. And since you were part of a lot of what was happening, it's you already know all the details. Um, eventually, it gets past like the recent stuff and goes farther back to stuff at the hairspray factory. And then you hit a psychological wall. Um, like, in the middle of the hairspray factory stuff. Okay. And... There's a brief... brief section of, like, semi-conscious memories where... Roxy is being transported through hallways, being talked about as like an object and an experiment. You, this was a long, long time ago, but the dream that Roxy had about being called it, I think this one, like it's a success. We did it. Um, it's the best one we have so far. You're kind of seeing all of that in motion. Oh. Um, and then. 
you hit like a second psychological wall. Okay. And it's it's kind of like you like reaching the end. Like there's nothing else there um, before you kind of get pulled out as Spuds' as magic fades. And he's just kind of staring like, interesting. Is she going to be like this for a while or should Until we knock her out. Do you want to talk about this first? Yes. Okay. And he kind of looks around at, like, looks over at Elena and Henry and says, uh, is there anything I should be discreet about around any of your friends? Uh, he hears in his head talk like this and don't worry about it. So he kind of gets this, like, Lopsided granny says, well, it <laughs> certainly works. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, what did you kind of grasp from that little exercise? Some confirmation of things I knew. Some possible confirmation of things others have suspected. For things we knew, Roxy was some sort of test subject in that facility was um, experimented on. Things that were possibly suspected, she may have been created there. Cloned something. The, um, the phrase, it's the best one we have so far, suggests to me some sort of um, genesis there. And... The psychological wall at the end, with nothing past it, could just be some sort of mental block, or could mean that the memories start at this point. Considering there is another uh, Calamity running around, who is a civilian and has no idea she is a hero, cloning operation seems probable if not necessarily the answer we're looking for that is basically what I gathered is that this is well she is um, a clone probably I uh, might have to do a little bit more research but probably has all the memories of the first calamity implanted into her brain. Um, if you, if we have a bit more time, I could see if I could get a, a basically carbon date her, see how long she's been around. What does that take? Do you mean like supplies wise or time wise? Yes. Um, most of what I need I've already got I might just make a few adjustments if uh, Easy Living can just keep her where she is that's fine I can work around her uh, and then you know just another quick spell maybe 10-15 right. minutes I think we can work with that alright and then out loud uh, Echo will say we have some possible initial results that we'd like to follow up on, so this is going to be a little while longer. Elena, or, well, she says, easy living, can you hold her? Uh, you're muted. Uh, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, do we need the Ravix, though? For now. Probably okay. best. Not like she can knock her out without a stun gun, but... Uh, what... Uh, easy living and watchdog would probably s is watchdog okay. here no Just no to... okay what easy living would see uh would be uh echo kind of just 
sits over by the side of the room, cross-legged, kind of just looking like she's focusing. She's trying to think through some things. Uh, Spuds goes around and adjusts things in the circle, pulls out some more, like, components and things. Um, When he finishes, uh, another several pages magically flip past in his tome. And he begins this new process of a new incantation. Um, and now as he's focusing, his eyes are just glowing a, a white, like a pure white. Uh, and a, a sort of like a faint glowing outline surrounds Roxy, where she's just floating in the air, walking. Um, Off the man. Yes. <laughs> and that goes on for a little while before um, the glow fades and Spud lowers his hands. The tome flips closed and then spins out of existence. And he turns to you and says, All right. Okay. Do we need her for anything else at the moment? Uh, no, that is it. All right. Um, can I telepathically just uh have Roxy fall asleep. Is that something I can do? And certainly try. <laughs> I'm not if it's not something I know I can do, I'm not going to just attempt it out of nowhere. But Okay, yeah, I don't think that's anything you've ever done. So All right. Well, uh like I will say to is he living? Don't need her awake for a little while. Any He's thoughts? Just going to stun gun her because we do not. You know, have I support this with the yeah. The smells. So she'll get the stun gun <laughs> she now carries in case of in case of Roxy emergencies. I love it. Just. Bzz. Zaps her. We're into our own things, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> um, once she's out uh, I imagine uh, Echo and Easy Living will probably just get her over to like a cot or something yeah mm. just send her down What did uh, what did you learn? So you recall the hairspray factory, I imagine. Yeah. And that Roxy was a test subject. Well, and that Calamity was a test subject. Mm-hmm. It looks like she may also be a clone. Oh, so it we were right, but we had the wrong. That doesn't make sense. What's your thought on that? As if she cannot be a clone because she is our friend. I mean, I guess that's not to say I wouldn't be friends with a clone, but. Well, Spud's kind of like. Think about it this way. his hat a little bit and says she's. <laughs> uh, she's about uh, her. Physical form, at least, is about two years old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Senville, she's probably a clone. Which begs the question of what happened to the original calamity. Is I... that the one running around with her family? Is that I would assume maybe when she went missing Cause... they thought something someone would notice. So they let out the original. Or maybe is that one is clone as well. We've if I were a shady government agency, I would have just sent another clone to be with the family, implanted the original memories, yeah. and killed the original to prevent any sort of leak. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Is then. there, I mean, if there's a way we could talk to this other one who's running around, I could, we could probably figure it out or get some more answers. We can work something out. I'd been 
we experienced some um, parallel universe shenanigans. So I was attempting to keep the two of them from meeting in case it caused some sort of paradox. But uh, if that that's to be the case, not the case, then there's no problem. It'll take a little bit of time to arrange, though, considering she is a civilian. Oh, makes sense. Nothing else. Calamity's got a rock salad alibi. Mm -hmm. The more you have these days, the better. <laughs> I'd say probably at this time. Sylvie returns to base. I think Sylvie walks in. You guys are in like a far back lab, correct? Yeah. I... She knows Elena's here, but like she hasn't interacted with Elena since Elena ran off too. So Sylvie is like pretty much assuming everyone hates her at this point. So she's she's just kind of, I think she'll probably like sit down on like the couch or whatever because she doesn't really want to go upstairs either. Um, mm -hmm. That's, there's all kinds of drama there too. Did any of you tell Sylvie to be in costume? No, probably not. Nope. Okay. Sylvie's oh. not in costume. Unless okay. you were in it when you left to go talk to the dudes. No, Sylvie wouldn't to talk to Leo. Leo knows what Sylvie looks like. Yeah. Oh, Elena just said we. We could be anybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know the no. pronoun date game. It's fine. <laughs> Oops. Well, anyway. Freya, really? as you're, because do you just sit down on the couch? I mean, still so probably goes and grabs the blue moon out of the fridge and then sits on the couch. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Freya is probably like pacing back and forth on front and on top of the coffee table in front of you. It's like a little, a little agitated. I think Sully cocks her head and she's like, "What's wrong?" Freya hates potatoes. Yes. Hates them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've had this cat last year. <laughs> had this cat for like two days. She only likes potatoes. This cat wasn't even a cat like how many years ago? I have no idea how long this Freya has been a cat. <laughs> yeah, I think you you say that, and Freya just looks over at you and continues pacing back and forth across the coffee table. Tail whipping back and forth. Do you want to go somewhere? Go elsewhere. We don't like it here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out yeah, what I <laughs> Slash my sibling or whatever this cat actually is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think Freya will just stop at one end of the coffee table and just sit. Like staring, like not even looking, you're just like staring straight ahead at a corner. I think Sylvie will look at said corner and try and act like, look and see if there's anything biologically hidden in that corner. Nope. nope. It's normal cat behavior. Yeah, yeah. no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sylvie sighs and is just like, fine, keep your secrets, and just goes back to her ice cream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally normal conversations. <laughs> I mean, that is fully a conversation I would have with my cats. <laughs> okay. Fully a conversation I would have with my sister, too. So it's fine. Yes. Um, 
that is Sylvie and Freya, and we can leave probably the rest of the team for the moment. Wow, Joe and Eugene head over to Leah's safe house. Yes. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to roleplay this, um, but Joe as Watchdog would sort of knock on the door and just let her know, hey, we're in the area, how you holding up? She's going to be like, yeah, I'm good. Um, things have been quiet. Is everything okay with everyone else? Last time people were here, it got kind of crazy. Yeah, it hasn't stopped getting crazy, but we're all back together now, and we've got each other's backs, so. Okay, that's good. You've still got the communicator I gave you, right? No, I think someone didn't someone else she swapped bragged. it out with uh one of the temporaries yeah yeah which i think cynthia and roxy brought when they visited mm -hmm. didn't they yeah yep. okay um and she'll say uh your friends brought me a spare one okay that works too yeah you just let us know if you run into any trouble okay uh sure and hey as long as we're talking after everything that went down a few days ago, have you seen anybody else weird in the area? No. Hmm. Okay. We're gonna see what we can find out here. Uh, thank you. Yeah, sure. And, uh, sorry for kind of disappearing for months, Banya, yeah. there. Uh, I mean, from what I heard, you couldn't really help it, so. I've been, <sighs> I mean, I'm not totally helpless. I was getting by, so. Yeah, I think we know that much. <laughs> See you around. Bye. And I will head over to the spot that Echo mentioned, and I am going to try to sniff the hell out of it. Okay. Uh, and if I can, I'd like to use straight up creeping on this to scope out a place. That's from the beacon, right? Yep. Okay, sure. Come on, maybe. Need a good roll here. Okay. Um, I rolled a four, but my mundane is currently a plus three. Uh, so that gets me up to a seven. Okay. You get to ask one. I guess in a sort of roundabout way of trying to find some evidence of what happened here and the goons, who or what here is not what they seem. Because I assume this just looks like a rooftop at this point. Perhaps. No, this was on the street. Oh. Here. A street. The, the altercation <laughs> happened in the middle of the street. Gotcha. Um. Hmm. And if the scent is not a possibility, then, like, some evidence of who these yokels were. Hmm. Who or what here is not what they seem. Excuse me while I think for like five minutes. DM now loading. Please wait. Oh, uh, yeah. Smoke is going to start coming out of my ears. <laughs> that 
was how I felt when you guys started with me on a scene and was like, wait, what? Not mentally <laughs> prepared for this. What's going on? Oh god. Um Can we go to break? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Because <laughs> I'm trying to think of what would be left behind that wouldn't be entirely obvious. But Cynthia already got, like, a sampling of whatever knockout drug they were trying to hit Roxy with. Um... If you want me to been... pitch some ideas here, as someone who basically client. grew up watching forensic files the first thing that comes to mind is like a bit of fabric caught on like a bit of metal nearby or something mm. that's exploded fire maybe edge i guess edges. i guess maybe i'm just taking it too literally because the question like who or what here is not what it seems i mean i can pick to a different me question is if that's like... a little tricky something that is disguised as something else okay then and let's say what I don't here know. is worth grabbing um or maybe what happened here recently i mean i kind of already knew that but yeah I, I don't really feel like there's anything else to add there um Okay. We'll say knocked behind like a dumpster. You find Kind of like a tactical gear set. Hello. With not a, it's not like a onesie, but like a stealth uniform and some weapons. Um, and looking it over, uh, you'd have to compare it to know for certain, but it looks like it's probably pretty close to Roxy's size. So. And I've just had a thought. <laughs> Oh, but I don't know about what was just found out of Roxy. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I feel like Joe will fish it out from behind the dumpster. Let's throw a look it over. All right. Here we go. Take the onesie and just. It's not really a onesie. A it's just body sock. Whatever the heck it is. <laughs> Bavaklava with the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. It's like stealth gear. So it's multiple okay. pieces, but it's it's just gotcha. it's all black. And just like black it's like light black body armor essentially. Yeah, kinda. Okay. Yeah. Get a good sniff of that and see if I can pick up any scents off of it. 
Um. Hmm. You. I mean, you can certainly pick up a sense that smell weird. Um. I don't think you would have any indication of what the location is from them, though, because they they don't they don't smell like places. Well, I'm guessing whatever trail might have been here is long freaking gone. Yeah, I mean it's got like a smell of wherever it came from, wherever it was stored. Okay. But like sniffing it, you're not like, oh no, I like it's not like you're uh you suddenly got a ping on exactly where to go. Yeah. But I have a scent. Yes. Okay. And it doesn't start. It doesn't smell like any of the places you've gone recently. So Okay. As in Rook Labs. It does not smell like Rook Labs. I was about to say, does it smell anything like work, like work labs? But no. no. All right. Um, All right. I think you would probably also pick up that it has a tinge of familiarity. And thinking back on it, um... You might be able to put two and two together this. Like, it reminds you of the fight at the hairspray factory. Hmm. Okay. I'll sort of hand the strongest smelling piece off to Eugene, let him get the scent too, and I'll pull out my communicator. Watchdog Deco. This comes Soon. through as uh, after all of this stuff has happened and you've communicated the clone findings to Elena and Henry. I don't believe you've shared the how old Roxy is yet. Oh, wait, no, Spud's dead. Never mind. Okay. He said that out loud. Here. We have got a break. I checked out the site where you were attacked by those goons. Yeah. They left behind some of their gear. Oh. It. I don't think it was used. It doesn't smell like any one person in particular, but it's okay. definitely got a, like a locational smell, like ambient smell. So I should be able to figure out where it was stored. Okay. Um, it's sort of this like tactical body armor stuff. It's pretty small like Roxy's size uh, and it oh. smells what mm -hmm. it smells like what uh, it kind of smells like the hairspray factory I'm thinking I'm gonna drop by there and see if I can find anything could you do me a favor and drop by here first uh... we, um, we found something oh sweet um, the kind of thing that should be involved in a longer discussion. I'd rather not have you going to the hairspray factory alone. I mean, I've got my dad with me. Or I'd rather have this... you come back here. It's the sort of thing I don't want to tell you over the comms. Oh, boy. Yeah. How bad? Not necessarily bad, but paradigmatic. What? Something that changes our understanding of the situation, I think. Oh, boy. Okay. Um... 
I'm going to make sure I got the scent and then I'll pack this up so you can look it over. Maybe you can sure find thing. something I missed. Thank uh, you for looking and for finding that. Yeah. And update, Leah's doing okay. Oh, that's good to hear. All right. Stay safe. We'll be here. Okay. I should be back in about, let's see, we're on 7th, like 20 minutes or so, depending on how fast traffic is. Okay. All right. See you soon. out. Echo out. Um, uh, since he's going to be showing up, um, Echo's going to go out to the living room, and I don't know if she actually remembered <laughs> he was there. I mean, you didn't know she got there, but you knew she was uh, coming back. So I think upon seeing her, if she's still in the uh, main lounge kind of area, she doesn't really say anything, but she does walk over to Roxy's list and erases Faye bullshit from it. Mm. She'll put it back later. Gotcha. And she'll kind of like... Wait. Hmm? Didn't Joe already see those lists? Yeah. He knows fake bullshit is on the list. Fair enough. Never mind. He doesn't know the Scratch details. That. I don't think Cynthia knows that Joe knows, though. Well, so Joe you, might have, you might have still erased it. Well, no, because they that was all done before <laughs> Cynthia came back. Yeah, he came in in the morning and he asked over the comms, what is Faye bullshit? And she's like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, later. Don't, you don't want to know right now. Yeah. Yeah. Joe's like willfully ignorant right now because he's like, no, I've got enough to deal with yeah. right now. That's that's fair. I don't really need any more problems. <laughs> uh, so what she's going to do in that case, is she's going to circle whatever uh, Roxy wrote for like Roxy's brain problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, Uh, she will look over her shoulder at Sylvie if Sylvie's awake right now. Sylvie's awake. I mean, she's kind of having a stare down with her cat. Yeah, Freya's just sitting on the edge of the coffee table, not even looking at Sylvie, but just like very agitatedly whipping her tail back and forth and staring at a corner. <laughs> like probably, probably even looks like she's glaring a little bit, like little angry eyebrows on this cat. Uh, this corner yeah okay that kind of overrides whatever echo is gonna say she kind of looks at the corner in there <laughs> that's just ghosts so and this is a well-known fact back and like she'll just say i don't know what's <laughs> in the corner either am i the person who thinks like this cat is essentially looking at the corner pouting <laughs> No, there's ghosts. Definitely <laughs> ghosts. <laughs> it's probably uh, the ghosts of the plants that died. <laughs> uh, what uh, Cynthia will say is uh, we have an outsider guest at the moment. You might want to put your costume on if you care about them knowing your identity. But she'll walk back. I think Sylvie will put something on to conceal her identity if only because concealing her identity conceals their identities i know this is not what she does but i'm picturing her like uh cutting holes out of like a paper bag just like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the amazing bagged fay just draws like a question mark on this <laughs> i mean amazing in comparison to like what she like normally does and like how like <laughs> stuff is like <laughs> immaculately grown and stuff this is not oh. nearly what it would normally be oh. but Dad, it's so quick plants. it's messy it's but she's like i don't really care as a player i'm like oh my god uh, <laughs> as a character cynthia's like cope <laughs> oh <laughs> it's but fine sylvia's... sylvia's trying to cope with all the other <laughs> shit I think she's gone by the time that happens, though. Yeah. No. Just oh, having she'll see it eventually. Yeah. But <laughs> Roxy's just napping. <laughs> I almost want to lay down to be thematic. Do it. Is Sylvie going to tell <laughs> Cynthia any of the whole drama that is going behind the scenes with the fake? No. <laughs> that is not on her docket of things to tell the team. <laughs> 
fine. Yeah, that's fair. We don't want to know. <laughs> she was like, I don't think they want to know. And it's not something that is any of their business at this point. So maybe Roxy's. But other than that, she's the only one that's actually still involved with Sylvie as far as Sylvie knows. So. <laughs> She just doesn't like if she, she wants yeah. everybody to feel loved, even if they did s sell her soul. Okay. But <laughs> I don't think Sylvie's going to necessarily follow because she doesn't think she's welcome and doesn't want to put pressure in the situation. Roxy just has golden retriever energy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Roxy> yes. <laughs> she's your golden retriever girlfriend. <laughs> Well, if that's the case, then Roxy's technically 14. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I was going to say, Sylvie's even more of a grave robber. Jeez. Oh, God. <laughs> or cradle robber, grave robber. <laughs> yeah. You talk about um, Carmen dating the current Roxy. Sylvie might have some commentary regarding that. <laughs> I'm 1,007 years old. Well, okay. Sylvie doesn't know how old she is at this point. It's fine. <laughs> It's uh, fine. So, with Sylvie changing and sitting on the couch, it's probably not too long before Joe and Eugene get back. But I think before we dive into that conversation, we can actually take our break this time. So, we'll be back in a few. Yep. Come back for the drama. An answer oh. right away here, so I'll it's go cowboy. first. Was <laughs> <laughs> a cowboy? What is <laughs> Tex Ar Arcana cosplay? <laughs> Rude. <laughs> That's crow. He's annoyed with us for <laughs> ruining the surprise. <laughs> Son of a. <laughs> I mean, you could have predicted it, but like, come on, man. You think you're not on anyway. your plate. It's hard to it's hard to make friends when you're keeping a secret, like your identity. I, I get that. That's why uh, I probably fell for all the girls. It was nice to have somebody else who was just in it. I didn't have to tell them that. Oh yeah, by the way, I might never die or age or could be some sort of weird science experiment uh and i can punch things real hard 
and uh also i mean in all fairness if you're a science experiment i think that just turns cynthia on it's fair that's fair out in the Is living that... room eugene chokes <laughs> uh, yeah good news i'm not dead um that that is good news yes we didn't get in a fight i picked up henry and then uh we found her mom and then she stood up to her and set boundaries and it was good it was very and very good iron maiden lists respected those boundaries no absolutely not she's an asshole ah uh... <laughs> hey she glad you're she... okay yeah i mean she didn't start a fight with me maybe having henry there me well i did promise henry i wouldn't punch her mom first uh i appreciate that i wasn't gonna well you know i don't really want to start fights uh i don't know if i've actually ever started a fight except for the time i started a fight with a wall at the hairspray factory or that time i broke reality but that's not really fighting people that's like objects uh, whatever it's philosophical things it's late i i don't know i've got i feel like shortly after liz leaves janet comes back into the garage like locks eyes with parker we're stealing mail get dressed god damn it janet <laughs> Cut to black. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> this will not go horribly wrong. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh. With that. Um. Well, I, can I really quick? Because I this is fast. Because okay. <laughs> this is like a total counter to what Janet just did. When Liz gets home, Dominic's sitting outside the gate, and that's oh. when he says it out loud to her. So now her and so now his animals pick up on him saying it. <laughs> so okay. it's like the plans are just everything's gone to crap. Okay. okay. All right. So what is effectively happening is that one meme of someone about to get shot and someone's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> just diving in front of each other. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Okay. Maya doesn't. Flynn's know. asleep. <laughs> yeah. Maya oh did Flynn is asleep. No. Uh. <laughs> yeah. What a way to end off episode two. What a cliffhanger. <laughs> there is only one of you, only one of me. There's a million of those who won't let us be. But they're not gonna, not gonna see me bleed. Cause baby, I got you, 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 you. I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across the dirt. I've been scared to live cause some people never learn. But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn. Cause baby, I got you, 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 you. It's a new beginnings and a better life. It's a dancing underneath the disco lights. They can try, but they can never take me down. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to love, not afraid to love you. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to love.
Sometimes life will push you down, push you down. Make you fall onto the ground But I know you will turn it around Oh, this is all we got And I know you'll make a mistake Get into fear and lose your way Find the light when it rains Oh, this is all we got Show me Show me love, make a change, time is up, we can wait for better days, but the days won't come, show me life, show me love, show me life, show me love, make a change, time is up, we can wait for better days, but the days won't come, show me life, show me love. This is all we got. Show me life. Show me love. This is all we, all we got. Show me love. Yes, tell us now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a video record. record. I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> Not in Florida, you won't. <laughs> you underestimate the things that I've done. Can't now I need bad. to know them all. Sure. Anyway. <laughs> Joe and Eugene arrive back at base. Um, yes. Did Cynthia go back to the room where Roxy was or was... Yes, she did. Okay, so the two of them walk in and see Sylvie sitting on the couch with a tub of ice cream. And an agitated cat. And an agitated cat. Uh, afternoon. I, I think Sylvie says afternoon and then just points backwards, say like indicating that they're back, everyone's back there. <laughs> Okay. Did anybody like... warn Henry? <laughs> <laughs> Roxy cannot do this because Roxy's unconscious. Okay. <laughs> she is unconscious. <laughs> Sylvie uh, has no idea Henry's here. She knows Elena and yeah, you and know. Well, Cynthia. I mean, you know Henry was here before you left. I guess you wouldn't know if she's still here. Yeah, but no, I have no idea. But I don't think she knows that Henry's still here. I think um, Echo's probably gonna have Henry stay in the back and she'll go out to the living room. Probably bring Elena with her. Yeah. If Elena wants to come. Okay, yeah. so you're just gonna leave Spuds and Henry with uh, the unconscious Roxy and then the two of you go out? I trust uh... I trust Henry. I, tr I trust Henry I trust to have a level with my head. Life. Sorry. Um, unless, hmm. Elaine, if you wanted to go talk about it, I could stay here, or I could go talk about it, and you could stay here. Um, well, Echo would, know that, Echo would know that Henry's more than capable of taking care of things if things go. Or you could bring Spuds with you. That's true. I don't um, know if it's if it's you're worried about Roxy doing something, or if you're worried about leaving them alone with Spuds. If you don't know yes. that well. Turning okay. into a fox chicken seed logic puzzle. <laughs> Who's the traitor? <laughs> you you uh, feed the seeds to the fox. We'll just go back to day one problem. of this live stream. No. Who's the traitor? We figured, we figured that out a while ago, though. <laughs> what? Um, actually, Roxy might be the traitor, but she doesn't know she's the traitor. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? Um, easy living. Any preferences? Not really. Doesn't really matter to me, which way. Okay. We could take... Why don't we take Spuds... Should we take, should we take Spuds with us? And um, the, the brain has... <laughs> uh, Cynthia will look at Henry. Don't name the brain. <laughs> say... Uh, She's usually fine when she wakes up, but um You can have this stun gun. You need it. 
I should be fine. Okay. You need help? Say something? Or yell? Will do. Alright. And uh, Cynthia's gonna head out with uh, Elena and Spuds Mackenzie. Okay. <laughs> I feel like y'all come out to Joe in uh, Watchdog form, like, skirting around Sylvie to, like, get to Freya and give her, like, scritches. <laughs> I think okay. Sylvie cocks her head to see how Freya reacts to scritches. Uh, Joe can give Freya scritches. Um, she's still sitting there very agitatedly. She doesn't make a move to like hiss or or swipe at Joe. It doesn't really Joe's acknowledge cool. him too much. Doesn't even lean, lean into it. She's just sitting there. Ooh, Tail whipping bad. back and forth. He's tough crowd. Oh, <laughs> hey. Hi. As promised, Hello. And Joe will present the carrying case with all the uh, armor in it. Cynthia will take the case. Good job. Thank Thanks. you. So, uh, is this something we should be adding to the list right now, or... I think it's something that would we all should be aware of. Uh, we right. use the code phrase on calamity, and wait. Um, do I know if a uh, watchdog has met Spuds McKenzie at this point? Yes. Yeah, we all met. Yeah. Up. Radioed you about it, <laughs> right? Yes, yeah. yes, you did. Yeah, because he's in awe. He's like, uh, I kind of like McKenzie. this guy. <laughs> Spuds McKenzie and I took a look at what was going on and the most likely explanation does seem to be that Calamity is a clone so on the bright side no weird interdimensional shenanigans probably wait so uh, Calamity was right? Like, she's not the original? So it would seem. She had many different series at the same time. Well, then it what seems happened? like they made a lot of calamities. And she was the one that worked out. You can sort of, like, see the gears turning in Joe's head. And then his eyes just snap to the armor. I mean... You can't oh, just have fun. Yeah. Was is das? What do you think? is gonna point to the thing. I thought that was about her size, but what if it is her size? As in one of the masked people was a calamity or as in they planned to put her in the uh, suit both I guess but I I mean if they're able to just like photocopy people like why would you hire anyone at that point I guess I will say Rampage it might um, be did I will say that like... when the altercation went down. The voice that was giving the code word to Roxy was a man's voice. Okay. Not to necessarily. That doesn't mean that um, none of them from, were also Roxy's, yeah. but you know that it wasn't someone when else. When I there. okay, so when I saw them, did any of them look like Roxy's size? Some of them could have been close, but they were all kind of. Uh, yeah different okay. sizes a few of them like same heights but and similar builds but it was certainly a v variety of people all right hmm. well i'm gonna need you to uh think about everything you've ever said in front of um civilian calamity Oh, like, no. The new one? 
Uh-huh. I don't think I've ever met her. That's fair. Okay, if we're talking about the new one, I mean, she doesn't really know me beyond being Tony's friend, so... I don't well, think... Sorry. I... S there may be other possibilities, but I think two are the most likely. Uh, one, the calamity that was returned to her family is some sort of sleeper agent for them, like ours. So might be doing info collecting, might just... I don't know. Um, other option, I think, is they put one of the clones, a very normal clone with no powers with Roxy's family to uh, assuage any suspicions that uh, something might be going on since we were gone for several months. Hey, hang on. That... I feel like Joe sort of, like, puts a hand on, like, a table and starts, like, working it through his head. That doesn't entirely make sense. Okay. Because... Tony would still know if they, like, replaced her. Because he knew it about her powers. But you said that he, like, forgot about it somehow. Well, that either brings us back to timeline shenanigans, or it means they have some sort of mind rewriting ability. Which is I not am already dealing impossible. with everyone might being werewolves. Please do not tell me people can also just be replaced with clones. But okay, also... people cannot just be replaced with clones. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> when, um... when, when we body swap, <laughs> there were, well, that would just means that there was a real Roxy in the other world. Then that other Roxy must have body swap i don't know i mean if i can uh, find evidence of these timeline shenanigans I might be able to help identify those things that's a good point sort of a abnormalities i kind of hate to say it but maybe it's about time calamity a and calamity b finally met i'm fine with that i don't think it will cause any kind of weird Timeline thing. I think they're to just a I think rough we've... test with DNA in regards to if oh they would yeah collapse. didn't we already do that? And, uh, yeah, we did. Was doing we that. Did. Uh, Roxy and uh, Sil. No. Yeah, it was Roxy. Oh, and Roxy, Sylvie, Sylvie and Sarah <laughs> uh, went to talk to Henry. Sorry, Jesus. time out. The brain. Uh yeah, you're the friend of him. Your ex is here. No, you can't see her. The brain. Yeah, that's that's fair. Sort of like turns to spuds. Long story short, I seriously fucked up. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, we've exhausted all other possibilities for avenues of investigating this them meeting seems like the next best thing we've got well okay we ask Do our calamity know? about it first but i feel like she will be overwhelming uh, yeah that, that yeah yeah but um do we know when she was cloned because i think unless like i'm missing something I would be the only person who ever met the original Roxy then, right? Because uh, I so. knew her before the hairspray. Mm, yeah, she is... This body is only, what you said, two? About two, years. two years old. Two yeah. year old. So that Question, would be... though. How long ago was the hair... How long ago was Roxy kidnapped? Because I thought that was like less than two years ago mm -hmm. okay as All far right. as Roxy knows uh, could have changed some things you know that she has so, artificially implanted memories now so 
According it, to her, it was le- it was roughly a year ago. I was gonna say, weren't we there? Didn't we level? Yeah, shit? we yeah. when she escaped, escape. though. But oh, that when doesn't... she escaped, that doesn't tell us how long she was in there. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So did did I never meet like the original? Or well, you could have met the original. You could have. How long ago did you first meet uh, her? About two years. You could have met the original. You could it have met the clone. Depends on your definition of original. You didn't meet this one. No, the one that didn't get fucked with by whoever the hell is doing this. Well, to be fair, if you don't know, that didn't happen to the original. The born ra- uh, calamity is easier. I guess, but I mean, my question here is like, Roxy always had the same er, shit calamity. You you didn't hear that looking at spuds. <laughs> Wait, so that was in character? Yes. Oh god. <laughs> ah. I'm so, a master of secrecy, don't you worry. So okay, but her oh, story don't. always sure. was oh, sorry. that she got like randomly messed up hairspray and it gave her powers right no sort of yeah yeah close but not really uh her account was the hairspray gave her powers i think and then she went to return it with the recall yes yeah it, the hairspray had the recall and then when she went to return it they put her away and then that exacerbated the stress no. made everything worse oh my god what recall oh fuck I don't know if that was an accident (sighs) shit this whole time maybe it was always intended and they needed um, but then was her escaping also intended i don't think so so i don't think we can rule it out as a possibility if they knew what they were doing (laughs) and this was successful and they failed to have a way to actually contain what they consider success that speaks to a level of negligence that I would find unlikely here. And I mean, shit, what's going on with the rest of her family then? There's no... So this one is... Who? I mean, should we check the rest of her family? The clones? I mean, if they can copy her... Was this, they held this one for however long there was no unless there was another clone hanging out as the as I mean the I family? remember Tony being worried about her missing that's why I was out there in the first place mm. how long was she missing how long was she missing <laughs> GM um Probably would have had to have just been like a week or two. Because any more than that, they definitely would have most likely gotten the police involved. So. I mean, she was only gone for like a week, week and a half, maybe? I, I don't know how. The cloning copying... process would have started before yeah. that, then. So access to calamity's original dna maybe doing experiments on those clones once things are nearing completion or once they had reached completion then they called the original in and swapped her out maybe maybe Uh, she look all her rampage look awful lot similar 
Is that just a coincidence then? Is there two different... They do? Do they look alike? When they're masked up. Or is it just the same size thing? uh, Rampage and Calamity are... Around the same height, Rampage is a bit taller, um, and they have, yeah, it's really just around the same height. They have the same power set, but Rampage has more muscle. So it was just same power set and roughly same shape. Yeah. Okay. Different well, facial I features. Think, I thought they same looked height. more clo- closer no, no. resembled each other, so um, never mind. Uh, no, there's I mean. a, they look pretty different. And Rampage is definitely bulkier because she was in the military, so she has mm-hmm. a lot more built-up muscle, even with the super strength. And her face is also pretty but pretty badly scarred. I guess I used to make her look less like Roxy. It... Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but I well. mean, we know Rampage was like experimented on, right? So what if like what if calamity is like phase i don't know seven of whatever the hell these sickos are up to you're assuming it's the same group it could be it could also not be there's a lot as much about the city as you do but you can't throw a rock in this city without hitting some sort of secret organization which says a secret organization moonlighting on every corner (laughs) <laughs> Which says to me that they probably would talk to each other from time to time. Maybe. Or they could be rivals for dark money funding. Or they could not know they exist. Or they if could know, be in cahoots. If I know anything about sports, it's that rivals come to a head eventually. And unless I have missed something, there hasn't been enough superpower wars in this city for that to happen. <laughs> I don't think it would necessarily be that overt. Sabotage, infiltration, corporate espionage. Mm. It happens semi-frequently with some of Hecate's operations. We have safety measures built in to prevent it. Still, it's a pretty big coincidence if that's the case. I was experimented on. You think that's the same group? Hell, why not? Seems like there's a very short list of people who were and were not experimented upon. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to rule out the possibility that it's all the same group, but I think it would be unwise to dis- also to discount the possibility that they are not. Yeah, fair. I mean, I got the scent of Rook Labs down pretty well, and that armor didn't smell anything like it. So, could be different operations under the same umbrella, could be different groups. We don't know. It's... Uh, uh, Echo's gonna go over to the chalkboard and just write, uh, how many goddamn secret groups are there in this city? Then writes uh, Rook Labs... Uh, accelerant, normal, normal, the pack. hairspray factory question mark, <laughs> and then werewolves. I guess werewolves. I guess <sighs> they're a secret organization. <laughs> okay. okay. Does God does Roxy know yet? Uh, she's asleep. Still asleep wake her up she should probably tell her we need to tell her when she gets up but i'm inclined to let her get the rest for now Do i think she's gonna need it start the with the good news she get to meet the other rock the other calamity compliment sandwich yeah yeah i mean i guess i don't one think it kind of hanging over all this if she's not Calamity 1, what happened to her? Could be the one that's living with her family now. She could why be dead and disposed of. Yeah, why would they let a perfectly good 
a set of clones. If we're stuff. assuming it takes time to get the clone right, then Calamity 1 would have super strength, right? Not necessarily. I mean, she would it have been was... the one that used the hairspray. But if it were a staged experiment where each clone is progressively has something amplified. And it might not have actually been the hairspray that did anything. Dang. That could just be the cover story. And it might have been something else entirely that drew them to calamity. Through and this just... uh, DNA set? This whole process. Um, um, since this calamity is organically really only two years old, a lot of her memories are uh, artificially implanted, so they probably have the technology to alter those memories as well. It's not something we My... can rule out. Which the working the theory thing. I've got is they found a way to get some sort of sample off of the original Roxy, started cloning. Once I mean, it reached uh, completion, called the Roxy in, copied memories, implanted those into the most successful clone, released the clone, killed the original. Then they have backup clone, so then yeah. if she goes missing for a while, they can just... If they've done so it nobody... once, they can probably do it again. So nobody calls the authority. And again and again. And I really and don't like the idea of fighting a whole lot of Roxies. No. Uh, closely... On the flip side, oh. sorry. Um, if there's something in her DNA that make her good to clone, her pony could be in danger. Her whole family could be in danger. If there's also something a fair point. specific about them, more than likely Tony, because they'll share much more similar things. But I feel like. When you say that, Joe just like locks eyes with Cynthia, and you can just see like the deep seated like uh, setting fuck. in. Uh. Okay. Um. So, are we gonna assume that her whole family might just be plants then? Yeah, so because I mean, really is. That's a lot of people. It's a possibility. And they are the friendliest plants, so. Well. I mean, if you're gonna put spies in somewhere, a nice friendly family, I mean, that's how the Russians do it, right? Well, you, um... um you're... Speaking of the Russians, how much power does Roxy's or Calamity's family have within certain factions fucking hell mm. wait what would like not to say really. that the current track playing is called spies anonymous <laughs> <laughs> no. i don't think her dad's even a captain at all so I they know, would just be uncle polly's someone wait. he could just be a cleaner her family's the fucking mob what well, not the whole family no, so no, no, hang on, friendly. what? They're How good. How do you know this? It's very obvious. I work with Uncle Polly. The bodies, the plants, the lovely garden outside of my home. Oh my god. The roses. Oh my god, you've been killing people? We haven't killed anyone. Well, it's that one seaweed man. I haven't killed anyone. I've just been disposing of the bodies. Yeah. There's a difference. That's I don't think pretty <laughs> fucking bad. Plants need to eat too. <laughs> <laughs> Plants got to eat. Oh, Her uncle, my... yeah, but and was Cynthia you know aware? This? Like turns with... to Cynthia. <laughs> was Cynthia aware of this part? That is up to you. If Cynthia was aware of that part. That, uh, I, I think she, I know she was aware, I think, that, uh, Sylvie was hanging out with Uncle Polly, but the hiding the bodies I, thing, I don't think she knew. Unless you told I her. I, 
it's Elena's house, so she would know. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh, and it's just Sylvie doing some uh, nighttime gardening. Yep. Did I come up with the like, reason why she's doing this? I don't sure does have a lot of wood I think, Charlie, I'm not sure if we discussed it fully. I didn't think there were a ton of bodies. I think Polly kept her kind of away from that, but... Yeah. Every so often, yeah. her you plant ability. Like, the small estate hasn't turned into like a graveyard. Yeah. No. <laughs> but even yeah, with some illegal I stuff. was gonna say, even with Elena's connection to Roxy, it would be one of the very last places they looked because Jim owns <laughs> the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay. So I guess there's that. I don't think that is very big of an issue. I think more... Oh my god. The Tony problem. He might be in danger if he is not a clone himself. Tony. Again, Joe, like, locks eyes with Cynthia and just, like, the panic. Uh, you hear in your head having werewolf DNA or is a prerequisite for cloning, maybe? At which point you hear Joe, like, yell back psychically, the whole mafia could be freaking werewolves! That didn't... They're not all related. Are Are you sure? (laughs) Um, Even if that's the case, we're already dealing with a situation in which a good deal of the city may be secretly werewolves, so I'm not particularly surprised by that if that happens to be what it is. I feel like at this point, Joe just like grabs a chair and is just like holding his head in his hands. You were like, the Ugh. one who's who knows who they fucking are. Why would you? Anyways, <sighs> okay. He's very concerned for his friend. Out loud, um, Echo's just gonna say, "Well, should we have it all out? Get everything on the table." I think we should uh, probably get her a vague first. A nightmare. Oh, it's more of one. We're just not telling you parts of it. Are we sharing secrets? Right. I'll wait oh. for Roxy. This is an exciting secret, so this is fine. Uh. We need to talk to Roxy and possibly get DNA samples from her family. And just go pop over to us up. Well, that is easy. You just go over there and take their hairbrushes. I can go do that, pick up food. That smell lasagna might bake her up as well. <laughs> just you, yeah, you know in what? front of her. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. I don't want to be here anymore. Get her ice cream, too. I think she did appreciate it. Don't we have a shit ton in the freezer? Yeah. I think she got it for us. Uh, I'm going to go through the freezer see if I can find Roxy's favorite flavor in there. Her and Henry ate a lot of ice cream, too. See if any of it's left, then. Yeah, there's probably still some ice cream in there. I don't know. What's Roxy's favorite flavor of ice cream? Mint chocolate chip. Yes! So you have a little, like, <laughs> pint of mint chocolate chip in the back. I was gonna say there might be a lot of that because that's probably Elena's favorite. Okay, never mind. There's several. Uh, is it also Cynthia's out. too? I think <laughs> it might be. Half the freezer remember. is just mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> we have so much mint chocolate chip, and then a few pints of like Costco peanut butter, butter, butter tubs. and then one that just says has a label on it that just says blue. Yeah. <laughs> Question mark. Yeah, it, it shifts blue. color sometimes. <laughs> It's like Neapolitan, but if you open Neapolitan and it was a different flavor every time. <laughs> Neapolitan, might make it's, Neapolitan all it's all better. the layers of flavor of blue <laughs> with the electricity, the <laughs> mist in the wind, <laughs> the sea. Oh my god. <laughs> Depends on the mood of the freezer, you know? <laughs> yes. All right. I I'm going to say... go oh. check Sorry. on rocks. Tell your ex that you're here so she's fully informed. Yeah. And then we'll decide what to do. Okay? Okay. She just has back before anyone can say anything. I think since, or Echo's saying 
what she did, I think Sylvie goes over to Joe. What? And face because she's like, Ro she knows Roxy will get in the way of this if. And she basically says, in order to get information on the pack, Oh, no. And specifically because they were aware and targeting the team because of because they drew me away from the Fae. I made a deal so I could do my best to thwart it. And I am realizing that it was the worst possible choice, as has been pointed out by every single member of the team. In order to protect you, I said I would claim your souls for the hunt when your time came. I don't intend to, but it keeps them from touching you. Elena's going to levitate Joe immediately. <laughs> Which is probably fitting because I think you just felt like the whole world just kind of went. Whoop. <laughs> She's just good. pick him and the chair up so he can't quite lunge as well. He's All no, I can say is that Joe has the expression of TV of static. <laughs> uh oh, you broke just Joe. Blue it's, it's fine. His brain is just like, nope. of course, the Fae own my soul. Of course. Okay. So Cynthia is out of the room. Elena is levitating Joe. I'm imagining it takes several very slow seconds for all of this to Sylvie process in Joe's brain. Is not fighting back if Joe does anything. Currently cannot. Well, he's currently being levitated. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's the air you... is very thick in here. <laughs> the tension. Uh, Elena's just like it's so tense. Takes gravity away from Joe. <laughs> a I am part of the gravity field reaches Spuzz McKenzie and a potato just starts floating <laughs> up in the air. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, I forgot about Eugene. Eugene already knew. He already knew. Yeah, oh, he, he already, already knew. knew. Okay, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Never mind. He was there when she you, told us. You what? I told the Fae that I would claim your souls should you perish. You... You sold us. You sold... And just like, Joe's hackles are like starting to rise. Spuds's tome spins into existence, but he doesn't immediately do anything. You're not picking up, by the way, Joe or Crow. Yeah, we, <laughs> You're saying something. We can't. We can't hear the heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Shit off. How about now? <laughs> yeah. No. No. Yeah. You, you're okay. You I should have known. I should have fucking known. And I think he just like looks at Sylvie with just absolute <laughs> hatred. <laughs> I think Sylvie does return his gaze. It's not hatred, but it is broken. She knows she fucked up. How fucking dare you? How dare I what? Know that I have fallen for a bunch of humans that took me away 
from the life I have always known. I didn't want you here! And for some <laughs> dumb reason, I still care about you. And I didn't want to be parted from you. I don't fucking believe you. Because if you care about someone, you don't sell them! I always knew you were a monster! But they all cared about you! And I convinced myself that there must have been some reason for that! Cynthia probably hears this shouting. I was going to say, Elena was going to think very loudly, but never mind. Yeah, no, Cynthia can hear it. You're muted. Monster, but I'll be She's booking it back. Okay. You. Is this loud enough to wake Roxy? Um. Can we roll a die? Like, yeah, I was going to say, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and roll, like, assess the situation. <laughs> she she sense a disturbance. Assess the situation. <laughs> it, that's superior, right? I kind of just hurt my throat yes. doing that. Oh, yeah, please take care of yourself. Oh, no, no. Roxy's cast the fuck out. Uh, no. I, I got a two. Gun <laughs> <laughs> gunder, too good. Do you, think, do you think Cynthia would have made it all the way to the room or just been like halfway there? I'll roll a die for it. Okay. Yeah, evens or odds? Uh, evens, she made it all the way there. Odds, she didn't. Odds, it's a one. Okay. So, made it part way there. Yeah, we'll say you made it halfway, so you can turn. But if Henry here, oh yeah, Henry does. So she's like behind Cynthia, but you would get there. Uh, if she, if Cynthia sees Henry, she's gonna be like, "Stay there, please." Unless well, you sure want to deal with that. Um, she might be the only one who can. <laughs> she'll say, <laughs> "I'll hang back," and like still follow, but like keep out of sight, kind of deal. Okay. Um, if you feel like entering, use it to the best effect you can. Books it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A dealer's choice when she emerges. I think I after the first yell, it doesn't take that long. So where you probably enter where that conversation paused. Uh, so she sees that Elena has suspended Joe. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, at and this point, that... has stood from his chair, but is just like <laughs> in the <laughs> you can see the chairs floating. Joe floating. Uh, floating. Eugene is farther back, watching this with a very like tense expression. Spuds is off to the side. His tome is present, but he's not currently doing anything. Um, potato so... list listing. Yeah, there is a potato just like orbiting <laughs> Joe's head. Um, Spudnik. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Meeting. We need a potato version of Spudnik now. Uh, <laughs> um, serious moment. Serious moment. I know. Joe and Sylvie are staring at each other, and then you can just come out of this hallway, and then Henry's kind of like around the corner, out of sight. I see we decided to have it out. She might be a monster, but she's still our friend and is in just as much danger as Viad. Yeah, that's what she wants you to think. Because I know how things like you operate. I've been told stories about how things like you work. Can I pierce the mask on that? Sure. Feel free. Own plus uh, money. Uh, and you do have influence over Joe, so you get an extra plus one. Yep. This is Yay. true. <laughs> yeah, I need it. With the with both with that and the plus one, it's only a six. Oh my Oops. god. <sighs> no. Some days I roll I really well. You can't really do team to today. pierce mask, can you? I don't think you can. Uh, it's arguable. 
Charlie, Freya's in there. And Freya, can I use Freya to give a boon? Because one of Freya's abilities is to give a plus one, or is that only for me? That's so technically only a, for you, but uh, she has displayed like he's like empathically tied to Joe. Yeah. What, sorry, remind me, what playbook is Freya from? Uh, Beacon. Freya's Beacon? Beacon, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I have to look it up. Yeah, come on, Lucky. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if she can just give a plus one, but she is an NPC present, so um, hypothetically could spend a team. So, yeah, so with this, it would just be you. Mm-hmm. I think at this point, unless I think you would probably need to direct Freya to try and either like give him, give her a command to like try and calm him down or to do something to help because um and I don't think he's still. No. Yeah, I don't He's think still very Sylvie, agitated. Yeah, and I don't think Sylvie would because of everything a, that's going on. Ev yeah, everything that's going on, and the two individuals who are involved are very anti fae right now. Yes. <laughs> so fair enough. Uh, Cynthia's not entirely sure what you're mean or plan to do. Don't forget to mark potential for that. Oh, that's true. Thank you. Can Sylvie try and pierce the mask to figure out what, if he's talking about Faye or something else? The cult spreading lies. Sure. Everybody Am pierce I... the mask. <laughs> I was going to roll this. Look like. I've been sitting on this one for I a while. I would also minute. like to pierce the mask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in the room. I might friend. do that. Pierce the mask Roxy and become in her like dreams. <laughs> aware of your surroundings. You're like, oh, I'm alone in a room. <laughs> yeah, okay. I pierce the mask on the room, and I'm like, oh, is Pierce uh, the ba mask? I'm mundane. alone. It's time to it do is. something dumb. Oh god, this is gonna be <laughs> terrible. Where's my mundane app right now? Just roll high. Yeah, it'll just be roll fine, high. right? <laughs> yeah, just don't forget it. certain conditions can affect that. Yeah, no, I'm afraid. I'm not. <laughs> that one, I know. Oh, that's a 10. Ooh, so you get to ask okay. three. Damn. Unless you don't have any, unless that was a natural 10 and you still have to add your modifier. No, that that is a 10. I'm just looking for the questions. Okay. Um, Pierce the mask. Um... What do you want Sylvie to do? What does Joe want Sylvie to do in this moment? Leave. Uh, die, die horribly. Die. <laughs> I was about to say the answer is die. Jesus. Charlie, I just um, sent you a message. I, I did. I'm reading you... something. Hang on. You're truly <laughs> dark as the rest of us now, Crow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, what is Joe currently planning to do? Cause great harm and or kill. Just fuck this. And he he is angrier than you have ever seen him. And I don't think uh, Sully doesn't have a way out either. Um, is there anything that can be done to calm Joe down? So how can I get your character to calm down? <laughs> Again, die. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's dying. You better hold a Henry up in front of him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that might just make Henry's him angrier. Here. Um I mean, yeah, I mean die is one option, but I, I would assume you're looking for a different option than that. Um, I 
guess prove that you are not the monster he thinks you are. I think Sylvie will shit. Of course you did that. Sylvie will then talk to Freya directly and say, Freya, show him the memory. Oh. Okay. Damn, Roxy, you're mixing all the good stuff. <laughs> she, she's <laughs> getting a good nap in, though. Yeah, she's getting a good nap. Yeah. <laughs> the best. True. Sleep. She's the best. like. True to Jenna, she's getting she a good nap. Is like, she is dreaming about like all her girlfriends are happy and healthy again. Oh, she no was getting upset. along with Sylvie. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Henry's there too. They're all Hang amicable. You know, and Henry are getting along, and we are at the beach. Nobody's <laughs> yes. being weird. Beach also, episode. Rampage and Tempest are getting along, and we are having a beach party. That is what Roxy's dream is. I episode. love this. <laughs> and the other Roxy's also there, and they are best friends. Friend, <laughs> <laughs> we do need to eventually have a Roxy's dream beach episode. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. We already had Sylvie's fever dream. I do <laughs> think that Roxy has a summer birthday. I want to say that she's probably also a cancer as well. Like I'm a cancer, but she also strikes. Me okay. As a um. So f- as Sylvie calls to Freya, she will look over her shoulder at you. And then look over at Joe. And Freya will meow at you and give like a a bit of an indication to which you would be able to interpret as like come closer as she as as Freya moves over towards Joe. Mm -hmm. Um and I meant just just like floating in a very weird position, um, enough so that Freya can like get up and get a perch, mm-hmm. and kind she of can jump on the chair. <laughs> digs, yes. I digs was about her. to say Joe probably has like the chair in his claws and is just like, yeah, crushing uh, it. She probably gets like on your shoulder or something, like enough to have physical contact, um, and you can feel her claws dig into the into your fabric for a grip, but she doesn't pierce your skin. Yeah. So she's just holding on, like having not something that, to hold on to. Not that Joe's paying any attention to her right now because he is yeah. just zeroed in on Sylvie. Yeah. Um, and then like Freya sort of turns slightly and like holds out a paw to you, Sylvie. Yeah, Sylvie, it will touch the paw, I'm assuming that's what Freya is indicating she yes. wants. Yes. And then and Joe goes for a swipe. Sylvie will take it. Um, well, as you're moving, your vision goes black. And when both of you open your eyes, you are standing in a snow-covered field. Son of a bitch, this is how you're going to lock us in a room. (laughs) This, you see, Joe... Uh, Sylvie, this is the exact same scene you saw before. Joe, you see mountains in the distance. You see Sylvie is dressed in winter furs. Uh, has something covering her ears. Um, there's a tree next to you without any leaves on it. And you see another girl standing there, also dressed in furs. She has a bow and a casing of arrows across her back and she's just like blowing into her hands and you see her breath fog as she tries to get warm her she has long blonde hair tied together in braids what the hell is this meet freya from before she was a cat meet me from before i was Faye. if i'm a monster i'm the monster they made me as you're saying this, uh, Freya looks at you, Sylvie, and just says, Who are you talking to? A spirit. She gives you a curious look and takes a 
step forward and says, what are you... You feeling okay? You're not getting sick, right? I think I'm just tired. And she nods. Should we go back early then? No, stop it. This is a lie. <laughs> you should. Okay. Alright, we'll turn and start walking towards um, a cabin. Joe, now that you're, if you like, turn to watch her go, you see that it's this, there's this building on the edge of what seems to be a small village. The real. That's all I have. Sylvia will pause, a hand extended towards Jill, waiting. He'll start as human. Fucking. Okay. Say at this point, there is another faint shimmering that gets brighter in front of you. And Freya the cat appears. Show me this time, Freya. What do you want to show Joe? She looks up at Joe and turns and starts walking towards the cabin at the edge of the village, following behind the other Freya, kind of hopping from her footfalls in the deep snow. We have to see the memory to the end. Fine. This won't change anything. All I can do is share my truth with you. What you decide from it is entirely up to you. Yeah, because you clearly leave a lot up to us. But you were we weren't so you weren't so different. My life was at stake. What was at stake for you, huh? A couple pets? Is that what you see us as? My soul. It's shattering. Because I bonded with you. Because I chose you over the hunt. And I'm still choosing you. But I'm not in your little girlfriend circle. I. You're someone I trust. <laughs> doesn't matter. You're someone I could rely on. You were my team. <laughs> Let's just get this over with. I feel like he starts walking towards the cabin. I feel like Joe sort of pushes past, and as you see him go, there's just like this little hint of like uncertainty in his expression now. You can follow both uh, versions of Freya to the house on the edge of the village, and human Freya 
pushes open the door, kind of looking over her shoulder and seeing that you're far behind. She smiles and kind of waits for you. Um, waves. You inside, Joe, you... I'm assuming you enter first since you get there ahead of Sylvie. Um, and you see a... an older woman inside. Uh, heavier set, wearing an apron and working over fire. And as she hears Freya and Sylvie come inside, she turns, looks over her shoulder and smiles at both of you and says, ah, back early. Uh, did you not find anything good, Freya? And uh, she turns and looks at you. And for the first time, you no. hear her say, Sigrid. Thing really out today? And Freya says, uh, we saw some things, but uh, Sigrid wasn't feeling well, so we came back early. Uh, oh, well, working on making some uh, soup, so if you want to sit down, warm yourselves by the fire, it should be ready before too long. I think Sylvie's kind of processing the fact that she now has a name that she was on a list. <laughs> yeah, you can... Based from the other memories that you experienced, you know that this is what had kind of been oh, they were saying to you, but you just <laughs> was not registering. And now Joe knows your true name. Yeah. So Freya will take off some of her furs and her boots and set the, the bow and the arrows next to the door before going over to the table. I think Sylvie will mimic, and I, if I remember right, Joe, it, like, Sylvie doesn't look like Faye, Sylvie. Right. You are dressed in furs, similar to Freya. Regular clothing. Joe is dressed as he was. So. The werewolf form? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, in a gray yeah, onesie, you're werewolf. fine. In a gray in a onesie. onesie. Yeah. Just yeah. an invisible werewolf walking around town. Yeah. With a fedora. That's fine. Um, yeah. yeah, and you have it's a fedora. Cool. <laughs> also say that you see, as Sylvie's been talking and walking, you have seen her breath come out in puffs of, like, puffs of air, like it's been cold. Mm -hmm. Not the same for you. You don't, you're not registering any feeling. Even though it, there's snow on the ground and it looks cold and there's a breeze, you feel nothing. He really can't feel anything past the rage, honestly, I'm... for being mm -hmm. really... I'm guessing you've also seen Sylvie responding to temperature, which is something she doesn't do. Her cheeks know. are pink. But um, Freya the cat also jumps up on the table and sits and looks at human Freya. Tail kind of wrapping around her paws. Freya, are you doing this? Freya turns and looks at you, Freya the cat, and say probably in this moment, Sylvie is nearby and human Freya also turns to look at her. And what you hadn't noticed before is that their eye color is the same. And then in that moment, the memory shifts, jarringly so. You can tell that there's been a jump in time. This is not what just happened. But there is... There are screams and shouts coming from outside. Uh, Freya is no longer sitting at the table. Freya the cat is there, but human Freya is not. The door think, to the house is hanging ajar. I think Sylvie looks at Joe and says this this one's new and then immediately runs out the door to see what's going on i feel like joe picks up cat freya and follows <laughs> and just like okay you're officially the only thing i trust that can actually like see me in the, whatever the hell's going on here so <laughs> yeah uh you run outside sylvie first and joe a few steps behind and 
you see that across the village, houses are on fire. And there are screams and shouts, people running through the street, some clutch, like mothers clutching children, running towards the back of the village to escape. There are people on horses, brandishing weapons, other villagers with arrows. You see in front of you, human Freya wielding her bow and arrow, trying to take down some of the attackers as they work to pillage, pillage the village. Question for you, Charlie, because I didn't ask last time. These pillagers, hmm? what metal is their, are their weapons made out of? Um, we have, I don't, sorry, this is me not knowing history. We're, That's fine. <laughs> Steel swords and was how advanced was blacksmithing at this point? Well, if this is Viking era, like I suspect, they would basically have a rudimentary form of steel because, if I remember yeah. correctly, they would take iron and then mix it with bone. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, Chinese steel swords originated in the fifth century BC. So, yes, yeah. they do. They have steel swords. Okay, so it is steel. Yes. So Googling Viking metal gets you a lot of Marth, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, they have steel swords and other, like, bows and arrows as well. Some, like, you know, hand axes and such, javelins, things like that. Um, but you see Freya's kind of just, like, in this glow from nearby fires, um, quickly turning and shooting arrows at all of these attackers and yelling instructions to people who are running and, and children and trying to get them up and out of the village. Does Sylvie get a feeling of what she should be or what she would have done in this memory? You feel a pull to go towards human Freya. Okay. Still be able to follow that pull. As you uh, start walking towards her, and then I think it gets stronger, so you pick up the pace a little bit and then start running. Um, you see as she uh, turns and fires a shot, but coming up on the other side of her in her blind spot is someone uh, uh, wielding a sword, and they, they swing it down, but she sees it just in time and nearly ducks out of the way, and they kind of they run past, um, and she manages to knock another arrow and get them, like, under the arm to, like, temporarily force them to get some distance. Um, but then as she is, like, swinging around her blonde hair coming out of the braid um, from off in the distance, you spot an arrow sailing through the air, and you reach out, but before you can catch her, it uh, it gets her through the neck. And she, like, turns and sees you, eyes wide, and slowly falls to the ground. I think Sylvie screams. Mm -hmm. Stumble towards her and fall to your knees. Take her in your arms. And at this point, Cat Freya jumps out of Joe's arms and trots over to her human Freya, lays dying, and just sits on the other side of her and looks down at her. Um, and looks over at Joe before she turns into that same mist and phases into human Freya's body. And then kind of following the feeling of the memory, Sylvie, Sigrid, you take the bow and arrow from Freya's form and pick it up and start wielding it against these pillagers. I think Sylvie will basically follow her gut through the memory, or like her feeling through the memory, and live it out as far as she can. You survive the battle and are left with the few survivors of the village that remain and the wreckage of your home. 
when the pillagers are driven off. I think she'll try and give her go through the motions, clean up, basically, if she can give Rhea a proper memorial. She'll also, with her knowledge, perhaps try and keep an eye out and see if there's, well, actually, no, that would have already happened and she didn't look there. She was following the memory to look for her, so she wouldn't have looked for the Fae. Um, but I don't, I don't know if she knows how to end this memory at this point either. Does Joe intervene at all? I think at this point, Joe's just like watching, like waiting, and perhaps almost even hoping for the moment that confirms his worst fears here, but it's just not coming. Sylvie going through the memory. Uh, things speed up a little bit as the villagers try and clean up and begin burying the dead. I think you would probably, well, Sigrid would prioritize burying Freya. Mm -hmm. Um, while the others work on some other graves and you bury her out by the tree. It's a long, uh, hard effort because of the frozen ground. But you get her covered and as you finish patting the dirt into place, Cat Freya reappears on top of the grave. And I think at this point the uh, memory itself fades away you do not return yet to where you were but are just kind of in this large white space with only a barren tree next to you i think sylvie's crying yeah you're back in the clothes you were wearing in face sylvie form No. I feel like Joe looks at Freya. What is this? What? Who are you? Sylvie. I would like you to roll to unleash your powers. Okay, this one's fine. What are my powers right now? Where is that at? It's freak. Yep. Oh god. That's not gonna be great. I'll say Freya's helping you in the situation. Except two. Okay. Not the worst. No, oh, that's actually that's an eleven. Right. Dang. Almost uh, subconsciously, you're basically sending your power out to Freya. And you watch as she shifts into a shimmering, transparent form of human Freya. My name is Freya. You're dead. Physically, yes. I died long ago. So, so what? She, she couldn't let you go and she. Sylvie. had no memories of who I was. Or, she really doesn't have any memories of who I am. You know, 
as much as I do about who I was. Hey, Charlie. Yeah. I'm assuming this is a magic created space, yeah? Technically, yes. Would you mind if I have a little fun? Just for flavor. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Please don't kill anyone. I, will... I was about to say, Sylvie's no, not going to no. stop you from messing with the space, so. This is a Freya-created space. Yeah, that is true. Freya money. I feel like Joe shifts back to human form. Okay. And as he does, it's not a normal shift. It bleeds out of him into the space. Okay. And just like the corner he's standing in slowly just turns black with mist floating through it. Ooh. Black okay. like the Alpha Magic power that Sylvie's seen? Not quite. Okay. Okay. Interesting. No. You're... You're Skinwalker. You... A witch. A monster. They... Hold many secrets. Many that Sylvie does not understand. Many that she's not been privy to. Some Fae are aware of their origins. Others aren't so lucky. So... If we... turn into... part of the wild hunt... do, do we... I swore on a splitting soul. I don't intend to uphold that portion of the deal. There are many ways souls come to the hunt. Some are the result of changelings being swapped knowing no different. Others are because of the energy they leave behind in life. If they were passionate and dedicated to protecting people or war, uh, people fighting in war or seeking justice, that could be a reason. Strong warriors are needed to do some of the work that the hunt requires. In some rare cases, maybe because certain people need to repent for crimes or sins committed in life. Or maybe they were tricked. They could have broken a deal or a pact with an unknown fae. So if we break this deal, we're still screwed. Hmm. Not necessarily. Think of it more the packs I refer to are between humans seeking a different path to success. Uh, someone might be greedy and want easy wealth. And then the Fae asks 
for what they think the cost is in return, and then the human doesn't want to give it, then they'd be punished. None of this makes sense. I... Damn it, I don't... Cat. You! You make sense! And he, like, wheels to Sylvie, and as he does, the color behind him shifts from black to blue. Like a sky blue. I don't understand why me. I get it if they're being jealous assholes about the rest of them. Like, it still fucking sucks. And you should never... Why me? Why does somebody else have to choose my life again? Because I didn't want to lose you. I'm, so... I'm future with endless years without someone I could trust was not it scared me more than I could ever say. Why the hell do you trust me? Because you've shown yourself to be reliable in true moments. I'm you an will asshole! I have hurt everyone around me! And as he starts into this, the color shifts again to yellow. I, everyone I have cared about, I have stabbed in the back. Or have let down. Why would you want me? You haven't let down the team, though. Not really. You're fighting beside us. You're trying to fix all of the problems that we are encountering. I can't fix anything. Not I couldn't fix anything that was on the table before, and I sure as hell can't fix this! I'm just an idiot who plays football! more than an idiot who plays football. <laughs> haven't given up despite all of the shit that's been thrown at this team. Despite the rifts and arguments, you've come back. There's a steadiness there. that can be relied on. You don't... You don't abandon your team. Not everyone shares that perspective. And... in comparison to the fickleness of what I grew up with, that I remember, before these memories, that was something very rare. I was guilty of giving up. Do you think I was alone? So what now? Now I fight this deal with every part of me, but I use it to get us information. And make sure that no one, no Fae, can touch you. 
despite their interest. That was part of the bargain. <sighs> we used them and I live with the decision to break my pact. But she just said. I know. I don't know what'll happen. I'm different. I've changed as they've said. We'll see what happens. Change isn't always a good thing. But sometimes it's necessary. I've lived in stagnation for far too long. You can barely keep the same body for 30 minutes. I'm getting better. A little bit. I'm learning to be human. Relearning. Sophia'll give a sad chuckle at that. You really still trust me? After I I wanted you off the team, I was about to I trust you to do what's necessary. And if for whatever reason that the Fae are able to do whatever they did last time, I trust you to be able to make the decisions for required for the team. Lord knows the girls can't. Not in this situation. Somebody's gotta make the hard calls. I trust you to be a rock for them later. And I feel like the yellow starts to spread and it starts to rain. I'm sorry, Sylvie. I'm sorry to put you in the situation. I... I just saw you as a means to an end. I... I'm so sorry. It's not too late. You can change your worldview. No. Look how, sure. how long it took me. I'm not sure how much of a worldview I've got left at this point. So build a new one. <sighs> I'm sure there's things that we haven't even comprehended yet. The thing is, the Fae fear humans. It's why I initially, er, it's why they initially contacted me after exile. They fear you all. After everything that happened, after the war. Here's something they can't predict. And that's <laughs> your strength. Maybe they fear all of them. I'm not <laughs> I'm not fully convinced I'm human. You're human enough. And I feel like he shifts back to werewolf form, but again, it's different than before as the yellow forms back into him and he has a distinctive yellowish tint now. Interesting. I'm 
I'll make this right. I don't... I can't fix whatever's going on with the Fae, but... God. I can at least fix how I've been treating you. I think... Sylvie pats him on the back and says, We can fix the Fae together. But I do believe the Fae is a problem that's a little further off. I think we have some concerns back home that need to be addressed first. <laughs> we have to get that pack after your back after all. <laughs> Let alone clones. I feel like you watch as the yellow transitions into a white. How do you eat a horse? One bite at a time. <laughs> you know that one. I've been around quite a while. <laughs> he pulls you into a hug. They'll be able to return it. Sorry, Sigrid. Well, so why don't we stick with Sylvie for right now? Um, <laughs> I'm not okay. really sure if I'm ready for Sigrid yet. Also, don't tell the girls about the soul thing. Not yet. Uh... It's a lot. They have a lot on their plate. Yeah, about that. Joe pulls back from the hug a little bit. Freya, where are we? Where you were. And you look over at her and it's still been raining this whole time. She smiles and looks up at the tree behind her, which is now blooming. And looks back at you before she shifts back into a cat. And there's a bright flash of light before you come back to yourselves in the base. Uh, Sylvie's standing in front of Joe. Joe, your claws a millimeter or millimeters from her cheek. She's frozen there with Freya, the cat, on your shoulder. As everyone else is still watching this in very tense silence. I assume no time has passed for them. <laughs> Pretty much no time has passed. Correct. Joe immediately shifts to human form, like not even thinking about present company. And he's crying. I think Sylvie's <laughs> also crying at this point. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, that de-escalated quickly. Ooh, I put him down. Jo do you want to be down now? I think what? it's safe. Somebody get Roxy, they're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Roxy just comes to, there's a disturbance. <laughs> sense Somebody crying. needs hugs and ice cream. I can sense it. <laughs> um, yeah, she'll put everything down. I think also to a little bit of movement catches Joe's eye as <laughs> Henry in disguise just kind of like Steps out from behind the corner, but doesn't come any further forward. She's just very much just, like, observing what is going on right now. I feel like he unintentionally catches her eye and then just, like, immediately looks away, looking at the floor. <laughs> you also crying. see her wearing a domino mask and a headscarf. <laughs> <laughs> so, and sunglasses. Not even processing that right now. <laughs> you think you catch her eye and look away. Have we given up on our plans to kill each other, then? Cool. Cynthia walks away and goes to check on Roxy. 
a thump as Joe just like is laying on the ground, just breathing heavily. <laughs> okay. Elena's think... gonna follow Cynthia. Yeah, okay. I think Sylvie tries to catch Joe because that was a lot to process. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, we'll follow uh, Cynthia and Elena as they head down the hall past Henry, who just kind of stands there, not really sure what to do in this moment, um, but knows more things are going to be happening. So it's just like, I'll just wait and see what they do. Um, and the two of you can get to the room where Roxy is on the cot, probably coming to at this point. There was a lot of noise. Roxy, Rox, you are in a room like... by yourself. Well, uh, actually, you, you're in, in a room by yourself for a split second before Cynthia and Elena come inside. Yeah, I'm, I'm awake. Uh, did we fix my brain? Um, no. I'm sorry. No. That's, well, that's okay. Um, I didn't think it was going to be that simple anyways, but, you know, I just kind of helped. A lot happened while you were under? Um, uh, yeah, it was a very, a very tense, like, ten minutes. A uh, watchdog almost killed Valkyrie for a second there, and then gave up and started He's crying within date? a split second. I am very confused. I don't know, but he is up to date on the fate problems. She wasn't I supposed to that... tell him until I was there to give him a bear hug. I well, he's you can crying. go give him one now if you so, want. Yeah. But, uh, oh, oh, and our new friend uh, Spuds McKenzie is still yeah. here. Okay. Uh, he helped with your brain. Did he find out what was wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. It just... Do you want to know now or later? Hmm. How much good news do you want? What's the good news? We'll start there. And then... Uh, we can decide... <laughs> To figure out the bad news, okay? Uh, we think it is safe for you to meet other Roxy. Oh, yeah! I bet she's real cool. Probably. Yeah. The only thing better than one Roxy would be two Roxies. <laughs> I have enough energy for more than one of you. <laughs> there's three two, Roxies. Though. What if no, there was no four more. Roxies? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> What if there was 5,219 Roxy's? Specifically. Oddly specific number, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. I wonder where that number came day, from. We don't progress the plot. <laughs> so, We're at the end, the it's plot. the Roxy's it's just... versus the werewolves. Uh, and um, <laughs> that's what happens. It's like some Remember spoof of that monsters versus of truth aliens. I have? That might end up happening if there's that many Roxy's. Oh. I thought you were going to be like, fair. I'm going to use that noun. <laughs> it's the fairy versus the werewolves versus the Roxy's. It's, it's, it's full on calamity up in here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways. Uh, okay. So I can meet the other Roxy. Mm-hmm. Should we find out where the other base is, maybe, like, when it's dark out? Also, I think uh, I should go to Henry's parents' house for dinner with her. Um, nah, nope, nine, nine, two, both of, both, both, both of those. Maybe. Terrible idea. Not right now. Okay. It's I not, mean, it's not dinner time yet, right? It's not bad news per se. It's more... We don't understand the context around the news necessarily. What's the news? You are a clone. Yeah. The you... that The physical you that currently exists has existed for two years... I'm only two years old? And everything you remember before that. The smartest two-year-old ever. Was um, implanted. <laughs> okay, um, well, uh, that's a lot. 
Uh, that may be good news, maybe bad news. Probably bad news. If they clone you successfully, there might be something in Tony that would let them clone him successfully, so he might be in danger. What if he's a clone too? Yeah, that's also probably bad news. What yeah. if all of you, the Marcos, oh, are but he's. He doesn't have powers, does he? Nobody in my mm, family has but powers you're both, to me, you're right? Both, uh, you're both siblings, so there might be something you two share. Maybe. If I don't they, know enough about. If they chose you because of some characteristic you have, chances are it's probably within your family as well. Or opportunistic. You are very trusting and you just walk over or to that. the hairspray lab. That could be it, yeah. But, but it wasn't me then. It was somebody else, right? Or was it me? A version of you. We don't you know. have the memories, perhaps, of that version. But they're not real memories. They were real to her. Maybe. That's a lot. They could have also been constructed. We don't know what their capabilities are. My concern is if they've managed to clone you. Mm -hmm. If they've done it once, there's nothing necessarily from stop stopping them from doing it again. You're incredibly powerful. But what would you do against many of you with the exact same power set? Evenly matched. One on one, know. but one on many. I don't know. I guess I would probably need you guys' help. Like maybe I think Elena could float some, uh, some of them, you know? Sounds like our fight with the werewolf cult. It's a start. I think... Before the werewolves at least have a uh, have a vulnerability. I don't know if I have a vulnerability. Which brings me to my next point. I think before we investigate in a very hands-on way, we should do some stress testing. Try to figure out more of the limitations of your powers, if they exist. Yeah. There's also a good chance. Um, everything you have done in the past two years has been unique to you so there's a good chance if they have more roxy clones they cannot exactly do the same thing like yeah, they might not be able to manifest your unexpected powers my powers? The, <laughs> the mushing of the pillar or the hole or when i brought that guy back to life yeah moving past that oh yeah Which... i like electrocute his heart to like make it restart okay i don't yeah. know i wasn't really uh, thinking i was just doing you know my argument is if we assume that you have the strongest version of your power set then if they're weaker then it's not as much of a problem if they have the exact manifestations as you, it's more of a problem. So if we figure out what you can do, what you can't do, the limitations of what you can do, I feel like that puts us in a better position to deal with perhaps many of you. But if, if they, they have, have the same memories as me, what we would just want to talk it out. If we have a same personality and They same could memories, have that override implanted in them as well. They might be able to change personality or memories. Does that mean I can put, change personality and memory too? Probably not. But because again, everything you've experienced in the past couple of years is uniquely you. They won't. They might not want to talk it out. Because they haven't gone through the same I'm, things. I meant more that the people who changed or cloned you might be able to have the ability to change the other Roxies. So the other Roxy is the real Roxy. We don't know who the real Roxy is or if she's still alive. Why would she be dead? Evidence. Tying up loose ends. So 
So you're saying that we shouldn't storm their base and destroy everything because there could be more super Roxies. I'm saying that I don't think that it's as easy as storming their base. And I'm not confident in our ability to destroy everything because they might have other Roxies or other clones or anything. And we don't know what they have. And I'm not predisposed to rush into a situation blindly. No, you're, you're totally right. We got to do reconnaissance, but that's why we have to figure out where they are so that we can reconnaissance them. We also don't why? know if there are other Roxies besides the two of you. I'd like to start with the other Roxy we do know of. Mm -hmm. Figure out... Are we sure she doesn't have powers? No. That's one thing we need to figure out. We know the recall did not work on her. True. But it doesn't necessarily mean she doesn't have powers. It could, yeah, what, it could what also she... be a different... Um... I was going to say, what if she has code. a different code word? Mm -hmm. That's entirely possible. Because oh, there are all these questions... That's why I want to look at this further. We start small. Well, somebody should look at her brain. Yes, we're going to try to make that work. She's going to, well, I don't know if she'll be excited. I wonder if she'll be excited or confused or scared or what she'll feel. I don't know. You would Tony's, probably know better than I would. Tony's going to be really stressed out. Yeah. She probably stressed out. Um, we should probably call Tony and tell him that we're going to meet. Can we do that today? I feel like that might brighten my day a little bit more. Okay. Um, before we do that, I want to make sure that the not actually killing each other situation is going to be stable. Shit. Because that was a <laughs> lot and I'm not entirely certain what We happened. also got to talk to Henry because I don't... I feel like she, she's scared of her mind. She's going to go cave and all of the progress is going to be like, she made so much progress and I'll be so sad if she loses all her progress in setting boundaries with her mom. Quite frankly, I care less about that than I care about your continued well-being. Well, obviously you love me a lot, so... I mean, not that you don't care about Henry. I'm just saying that, there are like, degrees. yeah, we're like life partners and stuff, um, you know? I, we can't do everything at once, is my thing. And I think we also cannot keep her here. So. We could probably step I mean, the safe house so her. she doesn't have to go back home. Well, she, I mean, she she was concerned that this the dorm might get raided or something. Raided? I don't I know. Hope. Who the fuck knows? I that's true. I feel like there's point, a lot of shit going on that I just don't fully understand. Shadow organization on it could be a corner. shadow organization. Could be werewolf cults. Could be fucking okay. mother. Could be clones. It could be fucking Roxies. Here's what mm. we've got. I don't think the Henry Iron Maiden situation is something we can fix tonight. I think the best we can do for that is find a solution, a short-term solution that works for Henry. We okay. can't fix any of these problems tonight. Well, and she's got to choose it. And she's got to choose it. As much as I want it. to push yeah. her to just be strong with him, uh, she's got to be ready. If you push too hard too soon, you might not like what happens. Yeah. All we can do is take steps now. That'll help set up steps later. I think she's afraid, though. I think she's afraid that her mom's gonna, like, hurt somebody. Like, maybe me. Or hurt Joe some more. Or... Are you not afraid of that? Nah. That she might do it? That her mom might do it? Yeah. Not, not that really. not asking are you afraid of her mom are do do you not think that her mom will hurt somebody well that's a possibility there is a pattern yeah there is a pattern and i think that well if she's that stupid to openly attack different 
Supa's, I think she's going to get a bad rep for herself pretty quick. Not that she's a great one to begin with, but. I mean, she's pretty well respected in the city. Until she it's... starts beating people up for no fucking reasons. My dad's an abusive asshole and he's still in power. Yeah, but nobody knows that he beats people up or that he sends his daughters to torture camps. Yeah, and I don't think she's going to be, like, super open about it. She might find more covert ways to do it. Maybe. I don't know if she's that subtle, but it's a possibility. Strike me as the type that can keep a temp on under, under lock and key. I haven't stayed alive this long by underestimating people. That's yeah. fair. I'm not have... trying to underestimate her. I'm just saying that I know where there's a giant magnet. And... Uh... I do not... I don't think you have a long-term game plan here. <laughs> <laughs> I do not I, think she might, is but... <laughs> made of metal. She has looked like normal lady. Maybe it is like a suit she wear. So she could easily take it off or something. I think that she's strong like me, but I think she can tend her skin to metal. Hmm. Yeah, for some the odd is reason not... that I don't need to disclose right now. Anyways, uh, yeah, never... the magnet is not going to be helpful. She can just turn it on and off. Uh, if she, if she's, I mean, other than flying, super strong. I don't know that she, if she, if she can't tend herself to metal. Other I mean, than she flying. Can't. Oh. Well, that's what we're debating, right? Can't Don't we know that she can turn herself into metal? We do. We don't know that that metal holds the same properties as actual iron. It might right. not no, be magnetic. That, that's not even, like, what I'm talking about. Like, if she wasn't... if she, So the magnet works if she goes into metal form. If she's not in metal form, what edge does she have besides flying on me? Like... Super, well. No, I mean, I think that I might be stronger than her. I broke reality. Let's be real. Here's one. Experience. Mm -hmm. Tactics. Strategy. Awareness of surroundings. Yeah, Control. but she, she she doesn't... But her weakness is her temper and not being able to control her, her anger. That is a weakness, too. True. It's a huge vulnerability, actually, because... People, when they're angry and they just go off hack-packed, that's when you make mistakes. That's when you fuck up. Do I'm you know saying... What, do I'm you not... know what yours are? What my vulnerability is? is that I trust people too much. Um, that I always want to believe that people have good intentions. And that... Sometimes I don't always think things completely through or I miss things. Okay. Yes. Please don't go after her without telling me first. Oh, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm going to go after her. I'm just saying that if she were to come after me, uh I would I my plan won. would be to run towards the giant magnet at the junkyard. Because they use the thing to pick up the cars and it's got a big old magnet on it, right? What mm -hmm. do you do if she's not magnetic? That's a good point. Well, if she goes back into human form, then she's vulnerable. But why vulnerable. would she go back into human form if she's not magnetic? It yeah, might, because if she emulates iron and it is magnetic, that works. But if she emulates mm -hmm. iron and it's some sort of strange version of it that's not... It could I don't just know. Iron. I don't know what. I honestly don't know what what would be, happen because I think that I have an inkling that I might be stronger than her. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm just saying. I'm. I'm just saying it would. I'm mean, all genetically enhanced and shit. I'm a fucking clone. It would mean a lot to me. No, I'm not going after her. Considered the other angles. You may very well be stronger than her, but you also might not. And okay. I don't want... I worry that you might rely on that assumption. And if it's incorrect, you could get hurt. I'm not trying to go on a head-to-head -head fight with her, if that makes uh, sense to you. 
I that just feel makes... like if she comes at me to fight me, I feel like I'm resilient enough to survive whatever first blow that she deals me and then maneuver myself either out of the situation through using my words or running my fucking ass off. Fair enough. So, uh, I feel like, because I'm not trying to have like a let's go right now in in the the ring, let's go head to head fight with it, because that's not my, really what I want to do with anybody. I'd rather us find a different way to deal with most things. Um, some things we don't really have a choice on that, and we have to go head to head with people. But, you know, uh, if I can avoid the violence, I would like to avoid the violence. Um, I'm just, I'm wondering what Henry thinks that she's going to do. Because that's probably most likely what she's going to do. My inkling is that she would go after Joe before she would go after me. Until I've made myself enough of a nuisance to her that I Mm. become the target instead. Which I don't think I have quite yet, but... You know, I she's got a stick- history with Joe. Yeah. Yeah. If, and um, I'm not really trying to sleep with her daughter. So there's that too. If we stick to the body system, it should be. I think be that okay. we should. Yeah. Also, I feel like Elena could be there. It's possible. She's but got we don't years know. on me. So she's got what? Years she's of a- experience. She's in older, but older doesn't always mean that. No, but yes. she has a lot more control. I can do some Rox. fine things, but... I don't... No. I'm not trying to say that I necessarily think she is stronger and therefore we shouldn't do anything about her. I'm trying to say we should also plan for a possibility that she is stronger. If she's not, great. That's awesome. But if she is, and we have operated under the assumption that she is not we're going to be caught unawares no I'm, I'm not saying that i'm just saying that you can't just just because she's strong doesn't mean that we shouldn't that henry shouldn't stand up to her just because she's I'm angry not and saying strong, that yeah oh okay well that's my argument here that's what i'm arguing for is that henry has the right to set the boundaries that she wants that's fine i no. Yeah, the, the the thing is is that I was just saying I would go for emotional support for her so that she could feel like she was supported instead of, you know, but whatever. It's fine. Rox, that is your area of expertise. I leave it to you. If you need help, let me know, but I Yeah, it's I would not my go thing. to start a fight with her man just to set reasonable boundaries. Oh god. What? Wait, do you say you will or you won't? just i didn't hear you no just to be emotionally supportive of her setting reasonable boundaries with Hema. i think that's excellent but anyways uh yeah no i'm just saying she she's worried that if she doesn't go Hema is gonna like destroy the city or something like that and i was like well that would be stupid yeah kind of ruin her credibility if she's at the point where she's gonna destroy the city i don't think she cares yeah i don't think she's at that point either though no, I don't I think so think, either. Yeah. That's why I feel like Henry doesn't need to go to dinner if she doesn't want to go to dinner. But I mean, I'd recommend voice. against it, her going to dinner. But uh, again, her choice. Yeah, uh, right. that not her. not my wheelhouse. Anyways, uh, well, I'm just saying that I'm not going to start a fight with uh, Iron Maiden. I don't I actually have. That. I was a little angry at her before for her and Joe. But you made me think about it, and you were right. Henry was the is the one that needs to stand up to her ma, not me. Just because Henry is the one who's going to get the brunt of the abuse from anything that Iron Maiden is not yeah. good about. I don't think that she physically abuses her, but the mental abuse emotional. sometimes. It, it, the emotional abuse is actually worse for you than the physical abuse. I mean, physical abuse physically hurts you, but like mental abuse makes you question your own sanity and shit. You know what I'm saying? Or like your self-worth. It destroys your confidence and all that. Yeah. I know. I know. You know. That's why your dad's just as big of a monster as her. True. Maybe you should talk to Henry. You maybe understand the situation better than I do. 
All I got are fake memories. And a year, I guess. Yeah. I feel like Henry yeah, still feels a degree of obligation towards her mother. Yeah. Is that is her choice? If she wants to invite anybody, she can. That's true. I'll just say that I'm willing to go with emotional support if she needs it. And then she can choose whether or not she needs she it. She can decide. She is an adult. I like that this. is true. That sounds good to me. I will just make the offer and then whatever. I mean, I don't think Joe could should go though because I no, think her mom no, no, no. Would, like beat the shit out of him. <laughs> I don't. I don't. That would make he, it worse. I don't yeah. think he will offer to go. That's good. I don't think that that should be a thing that happens. Yeah, no. I know. We should go back out though. Mm-hmm. We yeah. have things to address, I suppose. Also, who knows where they're at? If they're like gonna kill each other, then they're crying, then they're hugging, then they're just whatever. <sighs> well, if they're both dead, I guess we don't have to deal with it. She walks back out. <laughs> Roxy <Right>. runs out. <laughs> like, um, on sprints. <laughs> Elena just floats her way out. How... Cynthia's walking at a normal pace. How deep in his thoughts was Joe? Uh, for like a solid two or three minutes um however deep the marianas trenches <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay. sounds right um at a certain point i feel like he manages to like get himself back up and if she allows it i feel like he's just got like freya like <laughs> held in his <laughs> yeah. arms just like i need some sort of anchor right now <laughs> yeah she is uh she's much less agitated now yeah probably brings some sense of calmness and serenity back to you. But, uh, I don't know, maybe that... I would say before the girls come back, so oh, I will also say, tell Joe, you can tell Eugene as well, everything you saw and experienced. I think it would make him feel better as well. I heard you say that. <laughs> sort of like look over the way at Eugene, who I cannot imagine his reaction to all of this. <laughs> he, uh, you can just see the tension in his posture. He's got his, he's got his hands like in his jeans pockets, but um, his like shoulders are very like upright and straight and you can just see his jaw is clenched and he's just been watching this very intently i think joe sort of says at a level that he knows that eugene can hear all from all the way over there i'm okay we can talk more later just gives the barest tint of a nod but i was gonna say is that something you probably tune into that Unless you're explicitly blocking it out, pick up parts of that conversation. Hmm? That Wait, me or someone else? Is Cynthia? No, Joe would pick up the Cynthia no. Elena Roxy conversation. Oh shit! I feel like that does get him to like peek out of the corner of his eye at Henry. Standing against a wall, kind of just watching the room. Probably has her arms crossed. Or just like wrapped around herself, not really crossed. I feel like Joe slowly gets up, like one arm cradling Freya. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Is Sylvie relatively nearby? Bush, the closest. I mean, we were hot. You were like, right next I to think, each other. Yeah, I caught at you when you yeah. kind of slumped. <laughs> I feel like he rests a hand on your shoulder, which is probably the first time he has ever willingly touched you. 
Besides the hug, but that yeah. I guess that was an imaginary. That was a very overly emotional moment. <laughs> was, that, was that in the Fey realm pocket realm? Yeah, that was like yes. a that wasn't like real thing. bodies. That was like a spiritual hug. Not yeah. a not. Yeah. It was a metaphysic me, metaphysical whatever. metaphysical yeah. hug, hug. Not a physical hug. I don't know. In the free dimension, <laughs> it's Magic the interfree hug. and dimensional hug. <laughs> Yeah, I love how much you look like just a burrito right now. <laughs> I feel like a burrito right now. Yes. This is so cozy. <laughs> just like all the serious stuff is going on, and I keep on glancing down at you just like, and my, my hood keeps falling out. <laughs> like, yes. burrito. It's funny because it's just like when it falls back, it looks like you have an actual like hoodie and you've just pulled the strings so tight. So it's just like cinched around your there's, face. There's no strings. It's just... <laughs> Yeah, just moth. It's just when it falls down. It's, like, just oh. it's the little antennas they keep oh my pulling God, it back because yes. the antennas like yes. are heavy. Yeah. Anyway, so they anyway. like keep pulling it back because if I put it forward, then it keeps falling forward. So it's like, ugh. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I love like... them, but I've got a small head, so like, yeah. you know, that's what we're dealing with right now. <laughs> I do feel like Joe puts a hand on Sylvie's shoulder and says. Uh, I'll add you the list of people I need to make shit up to, I guess. And then Roxy just comes racing and <laughs> don't, don't, I swear to God, I'll kill you if you did. I feel like Joe almost jumps out of his skin at that one. <laughs> 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 Just like full board sprinting. You squeeze Freya a little too tightly out of reflex and she just gives this very disgruntled <laughs> mew. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, good. You two didn't <sighs> kill each other because I would have had to kill you again. <laughs> I'd have brought you back nice, and killed Rox. you again. The fuck? Easy on the volume. Why? I'm always this loud. Wow, that was a little louder than normal. He's processing a lot. Did she break your brain? Um, I don't know if breaks the right word. Okay, well, I'm glad that you're both alive and apparently not killing each other. That's ideal for me. Um, I feel like that would be yeah. really awkward if one of you killed the other one, because then I'd have to be very angry at you for a long time. Anyways, uh... I feel like Joe notices Spuds is still like in the room and he's just like, oh shit. Switches back to werewolf. <laughs> I think oh, it's a little late for that, Joe buddy. Joe does that can, based off of what happened in the reality space. Mm -hmm. Is there anything different about Joe's shift? No. No. Physically looks the same. He's just a mood ring in the Freya dimension. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mood wolf. But the same mix of energies internally, I think. A uh, mood. All right, anyways. Yeah, that makes sense. She's uh, just going to look at the time, though, too. Roxy's looking at the clock because she knows that there is mm -hmm. a time limit on when Henry's going to want to leave. So she wants to. It's probably getting later into the afternoon, so we're creeping closer. She just turns to Henry and goes, if you want emotional support tonight, if you choose to go, I would be happy to accompany you. I have to do it in costume because there's a shadow organization after me, though. But I'll wear a hood first, so, you know, I see. Joe does not move his head. The little ear kind of going... <laughs> but Roxy's very much not saying anything specific. She's just putting it out there. Uh, if thanks. you need it, just ask, and I'm happy to attend. Sure. I'll keep that in mind. You also don't have to leave anytime soon if you don't need to. Well, we have safe houses that we can put you up in. Whatever you want. We got you. Okay. 
just nods a couple times. Anybody else want ice cream? <laughs> I was but, like, yes. "Ooh, I'll take yes. some." I, I think everyone needs ice cream at this point. Yeah, if you Roxy going just to start scooping bowls of ice cream with with the uh, lasagna, but um, you are already awake. Yeah. Well, let's eat some ice cream, and then I think we we're gonna try to meet the other Roxy. You want to meet the? Oh, I guess I should not say my name. Oops. It's, I think it might be too late. Yeah. Whatever. Rox, I think a lot of cats are out of the bag. Oh, uh, Spuds is no just offense. like, I did kind of see all your memories, so. All right. Well, there's that then. Don't worry. I'm very discreet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 I just remember Michael saying, <laughs> so discreet. We're so I'm discreet. so discreet. <laughs> I'm so discreet. <laughs> Yo, stop bubble amidst all this. Damn, he's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Joe fangirls spun so well. <laughs> I actually didn't ask this yet. On a scale of one to ten, how hot is Spud's <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, I think you did ask this. No, oh, did say, I? no. He was, on a scale he was of one to ten, he was potato. No, no, so no. Tex Arcana. Tex Arcana was shadow. Oh. Spud's oh, McKenzie yeah. is like. It is like levels of goofy so he's not <laughs> somebody's type you know yeah somebody's type but he's he's definitely not uh high on the hotness scale all right Strikes, all right he's not a lane kind or of Cynthia's man type. my sister would be attracted to which is in like the seth rogan area <laughs> huh. anyways uh, Moving on. No, I mean, not nah, Roxy's type. I was going to make a joke about potato sexual if he was hot, but, you know, if you're a potato sexual. <laughs> Unfortunately, he is not a hot potato. <laughs> he, is, uh, he is packing a lot, though. <laughs> God. Oh, potatoes. Packing a lot of potatoes. Uh, a potato in your... <laughs> got some tots. He's <laughs> happy to see me. No. <laughs> this is the content y'all come for, right? He got, he's got some, he's got some tat tats. <laughs> um, but as you get some ice cream and spread it around and take a little break after all of this emotional turmoil, I think that's yes. Yeah. Um, if everyone is doing ice cream together, uh, Cynthia is going elsewhere to work on other things okay roxy doesn't want to be to look her to be alone so she also goes <laughs> i feel like that's counterproductive to what you were trying to do but sure well sylvie's not if you pass out the comfort <laughs> carbs will people we will be comforted the comfort ice cream we haven't gotten to the cream. carbs yet. yeah i feel like if you're i feel like if you're concerned then uh she would ask elena if elena wanted to go do other things <laughs> just on things well no i mean if you don't want that's fine i was just i if i if you want company i guess if you want alone time you can be alone too you are the uh emotions specialist here yeah but i can't like read your emotions or anything weird no, I meant with them. They're oh, yeah, yeah. going I, through something. I, if you are I'm, worried about Echo being alone, all? I can go hang out in the lab. That would be nice. I don't... I can feed you ice cream together, with no. <laughs> gravity, and you can work on your science with two hands. There you go. Although okay. it would probably be better to have your telepathy do it, because I don't really know. That's some fine aiming. Maybe we should try that. <laughs> hey, it could be interesting. Spoon. Yeah, it's gonna be ice clothes. cream all over the ceiling. <laughs> it's fine. It'd be funny though. Just so everything's in the base. covered in sticky mint. Roxy just sits on the floor, crisscross applesauce, like next to one of the coffee tables, and just in the middle of the room, absorbing yep. everybody's emotions. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Cynthia has no particular desire to be around this kumbaya moment so uh <laughs> she is elsewhere we should sing songs and have group hugs all right 
<laughs> Cynthia's like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> um, and with that, I think that's where we'll end tonight's session. Oh boy. <laughs> one last thing. Uh, okay. I feel like as the ice cream is being spooned out, first of all, Joe like looks at the spoon for a second and looks at the bowl, just like picks it up and just like <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. I support this. And then like a couple seconds into that, he sort of looks back up, looks over at Henry. You want some? <laughs> You just <laughs> Roxy just tops and she's not not the whole carton, just like his own bowl. She, what she, he did she, that in. Daddy just stuck his face in. Roxy just stops, looks at him, and then like shakes her head and face palms. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "There's so much dog hair in that now." <laughs> <laughs> No, he did like he did that with like his own portion, but like oh, I he thought he was offering her the bowl, bowl that you had just that was no, he's okay. offering to spoon her like, up a separate oh, ice cream. No. Okay, <laughs> I, that's okay, slightly that makes... less questionable. I yeah. was like, don't okay, offer in your mind. Like, this furry bowl. Of ice. Oh my god, no. <laughs> he's extending an olive branch. Um, I think she like then she won't her. the way. She looks at like you. And there's a moment of silence before she says, Sure. Sort of scoot over on the couch and spoons him up. And just. I want to make a lewd comment right now, but I'm, I'll just refrain. <laughs> And just like quietly sits and eats his ice cream. Henry will come and pick up the bowl and will perch on the edge of a, a chair a little ways away instead of on the couch. Do I clock that she's wearing the ring? Are you hyper focused on her? Always. Yeah. And then probably. Yeah. yeah. There's not a smile on Joe's face, but just like the tiniest bit of satisfaction, hope. It's some sort of positive emotion. He's not mm -hmm. sure what. Emotions are hard. Something that's not absolute despair. Yeah. Oh, I feel something positive for a chance. Okay. He's gone through an entire range tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ride them roller coasters. <laughs> well, Cue the roller coaster <laughs> music. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Tonight was a journey. I almost used my moment of truth on you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like this close to being like I activate my moment of truth. I was just sitting here like, oh my god, please don't kill Sylvie. <laughs> you I were. Fully... I was like, Roxy's sleeping, and there's nothing I can fucking do. <laughs> he was suspended. I there. mean, to be fair, it's Cynthia fine. said get everything out in the open, so Sylvie was like, fuck it, I'm doing it. <laughs> I was not expecting to reveal all that about Sylvie yet. <laughs> Yay. So that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Freya is best cat. <laughs> I do like Freya. She's a good kitty. Sister right. kitty. Also, also, thanks. Thanks for her making that whole emotional moment because I was not planning on revealing any of that to the rest of the team, let alone Joe. <laughs> Yay! Congratulations, Joe has made a second friend. <laughs> you have two friends. Wait, three. Roxy, Cynthia, and... 
Tony. Tony. Elena and you are friends too. That's a lot of friends. And plus Tony. Well, How many of friends. Joe's friends is he scared of? <laughs> Most of them. Percentage. High percentage. A good percentage. <laughs> um, okay, end of session questions. Yes. Uh, I think we can get the easy one out of the way here. I'm going to grow closer specifically <laughs> to Sylvie. Aww. <laughs> and I expect this one will actually stick. Aww. I think for the first time ever, Sylvie has influence <laughs> over Joe. Second time, isn't it? It's not the first time, but the first time it okay. was like immediately lost. Yeah, it immediately lost. <laughs> oh, okay. I accidentally killed someone. Because that was the session That's immediately right. after that was when she killed the guy. <laughs> Accident. Okay. Question mark. Second time ever. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Sylvie finally has Sylvie has influence oh. over. Jo I'll get the <laughs> other easy one out of the way. So we also <laughs> grew closer to the team, specifically to Joe. Um, I'm marking that potential because Sylvie is still terrified out of her mind in regards to everything going on. Fair. That's fair. But... Okay. I think... Joe hmm. just got influence over Sylvie again. Yes, and I need to select what I'm getting as part of that. Oh, yeah. I think I'll clear... Oh, right. I think I'll clear and secure. Yes. Very nice. Is that Sylvie of all people placing trust in him is like, wow. Thanks. I am worthy. <laughs> I love it. Now that we got the two easy ones out of the way. Yeah, yeah. now the rest of you get to figure out what the fuck you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> and now I finally have reasons to use all these scenes I've been planning with Sylvie. <laughs> Uh-oh. Bonding time. Yes. All the bonding time. It's Here fine. we go. Finally. So you might want to tell Sylvie at some point that Tony is a werewolf so we can protect his identity too. Oh, we'll get to there. <laughs> Maybe that's what made Roxy so easy to clone. That's what I'm worried about. Yep. Now <laughs> Lena just it's keeps hitting this nail on the head. Conspiracy. <laughs> Everybody. Oh, oh man. Lena's going to grow closer to Cynthia because we are oh. bonding over ice cream. And Cynthia really just needs a hug. Yeah. Yes. That's fair. She does. Sylvie so would give her a hug, but she can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would make things worse. <laughs> hmm. Once Joe emerges from the Oops, cavern that's been carved into his head, I think Cynthia maybe wrong. he'll be a bit more <laughs> comforting. <laughs> Wait, how'd you spell it? With an S. <laughs> S Y N T H I A. To be fair, someone also, or I do Close. believe we had another spell Cynthia with an S earlier. Yeah. So I spelled, I didn't even write, I did write Roxy today. I wrote Roxy Wait. is a clone, is clone, not a clone, just is clone. I think I'm a clone now. Joe Big Mad. We should make like, Cards Against Humanity cards up these. I yeah. think that's what I was, I was thinking. Tarot, so tarot, tarot, tarot readings or oh yeah, yeah. Oracle, so Oracle cards. Fun. Cards Against Humanity cards. Yeah, I, I'm I'm here for it. And then we play I'm it. I'm so on... down to figure out how we make our own custom Cards Against Humanity just well, you based can, off you of can, random shit. You can do it online, I think, too. Oh, like, yeah, so we can, can play it on the stream box. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to mark potential because I have no conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if this will give you a condition or not, so we'll find out. <laughs> I, because Elena's kind of existing as a bit of a rock for Cynthia right now, because she does not feel like she knows what's going I'm stable. on. Stable. You are stable. It's a nice change. Um, uh, this might give you a condition, but uh, save your up, danger down. No, no condition. 
Danger can go down. Let me, let me double check the, the magical guide. Danger can go down, yeah. Nice. Danger, down, savior up. Uh-huh. Excellent. So, my initial thought for Cynthia was uh, growing closer to Elena because that did, I think, happen. But I think the more emotionally impactful thing for her is um, growing away from the team a little uh, because she feels like she has lost control of the situation and doesn't understand what's going on. And Enjoy. we are specifically taking influence away from Joe because she oh. doesn't know why he did what he did and she doesn't necessarily trust it. And is uh, confused. And if he tried to exert influence over her, I think she'd be resistant to that. So, take you know, it. fair reaction. Yeah. But also, please absolutely ask him about that. I'm not sure she will. I think that if Roxy had been awake, I think she would have had a similar reaction. Like, she understands feeling violated and, and upset about it, but... Uh, that is this, not in her mind a reason to kill somebody like i mean it's a pretty bad thing to do to sell somebody's soul but like also like oh that's that's not why cynthia is growing farther from him that's not the death oh threat. no that's part of it she's not a fan of that it's the quick change from murderously angry to crying and forgiving just on a dime and she doesn't know why and that's that... fair oh that's yeah. Fair, yeah well i mean roxy missed all of that so like she didn't see yeah but that she just came out to the crying was a lot of uh, yeah i i don't blame cynthia because that would be yeah. like if it's, you it's see like that both in of those real things life, together you're yeah. like are you stable are you okay if we didn't yeah. go no. to the lab to eat ice cream <laughs> elena would have gone further from the team but mm -hmm. probably further from Joe for the quick 180, but I did the opposite thing. That's mm -hmm. fair. I mean, for what it's worth, uh, Cynthia did grow closer to Elena. It's just that took the more emotional yeah. yeah, yeah For, for, for yeah. Elena, the bonding is more... She'll, we'll deal with this later. Uh, they, I, they are in the lab, and Cynthia is just like, I, I am leaning on your shoulder. Screaming. Right <laughs> She's not screaming. Mentally screaming. <laughs> she is screaming. Telepathically screaming. <laughs> Yeah, that's and true. And now for the one we're all waiting to hear, uh, how's Roxy doing? <laughs> yeah. Roxy Hello, is not yeah, great, uh, but she's also really big into like I can't change the things that I can't con or I can't control what I can't control. So like, hello, I just have to do the best I can with this. Ah, uh, and so I would say that she feels closer to the team. I think that she feels closer to both Elena and Cynthia. She's not entirely sure what the fuck was going on out there. <laughs> she wasn't there. I mean, I think she realizes that if Joe got that mad, Sylvie must have told him and, you know, like, but yeah she, i mean she didn't see all that so but i think that she was probably grew closer to cynthia specifically i mean i would say both alina and cynthia but cynthia was like actually in her head and like seeing her memories so there is like a closeness that comes with the vulnerability also i think that just she feels like Cynthia can understand what Roxy's going through maybe better than anybody else just because Cynthia has also had experiments done upon her and had her powers changed and I mean she's not a clone but to our knowledge um <laughs> she's a clone and she's uh the pack leader <laughs> her the original Cynthia's actually the alpha and your clone Cynthia. And, uh... That's a terrifying thought. Yeah. <laughs> Evil Cynthia. Not something you want to deal with. No. Oh, God. That's scary. Um, uh, but yeah, so I think there's she's... a route where it could happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a there's a parallel universe where we're all villains and 
Roxy's a horrible person. Um, Ooh, that's an icebreaker for you, Charlie. What's your villain <laughs> what would your version? evil evil version of you look like? Um, <laughs> yeah, like oh, I know this. I'll, I'll wait for that to be an Hell icebreaker. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to evil Elena. Yes, I love it. Um, but yeah, so I, I think it was, she's closer to both of them. She didn't really get to see the drama out there. She was just there for the aftermath and crying doesn't really bother her. So like, that's fine. Uh, if she'd seen Joe that angry though, she would have been like, bra and like, been like, that's, you got to get that under control, dude. Nothing should make you that angry. (laughs) (laughs) I, Unless literally the people you love most have been killed in front of your <laughs> eyes. I I don't know. I never speak that loudly. In I know, I was life. like... So, <laughs> like, my throat is just like... <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Poor and then we watch the person Sylvie loved most get killed in front of her eyes, so it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I think he, he probably developed empathy for her in that moment. Mm, um, yeah, just and he was... It was fighting it tooth and nail because <laughs> no, I want to be mad. You can't. <laughs> we won't let you. Humanity. <laughs> God Look damn humanity. fantastical cat of empathy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would be if I was reincarnated as an empathy cat. Just that right there. That's what I want to be when I grow up. Oh. Anyways, that'll never happen. So, uh, so what are you changing? Cynthia? Um, um, Captain's trying to attack my arm in yeah, a that loving happen. way. No. Yeah, well, not attacking. He wants. He's trying to grab it, so I'll pet him. Yeah, which, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sparrow, Sparrow does that sometimes too. He he like will grab my hand and like, like put it on his head. Yes. Or else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly it. <laughs> Sparrow's very needy. He does that too. Yeah. Um, but Aegon does too. So. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, they learned. Uh, he learned it from him. No, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, we're going to say, because of the revelations for this, mundane down, uh, freak up, but she needs it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but in a hot way. <laughs> yeah. I think it's in more of a, um, I relate to you more now because you're more, slightly more disconnected from civilian life. And that was something I associated heavily with you. And this is a bit more distance between you and that in Cynthia's mind, which oddly enough makes her more comfortable with you <laughs> not that she was uncomfortable before it's more just like yeah. i feel like i can relate to you more a little mm-hmm. yeah i mean she, like i said she feels closer to both elena and cynthia it was just the that yeah the the tipping factor was that you actually got to see her memories and then also that you also can identify so there's just a different level of you know yeah that comes with that and both of those things can happen because you actually changed them the opposite way last time so <laughs> yeah but that no. she, I, don't know, she, I don't think she meant it as a compliment that time. <laughs> <laughs> or did she? That, she might have. I think she did because I think I brought it back around at the end. Okay, so yeah. That was why you... Wait. I will say uh, normally Cynthia ups mundane not in a positive way. Because <laughs> she think... doesn't like... Yeah. She uh, tends to stray away from that label more than the others, I think. Superior is the one that <laughs> she strays from just because she... She doesn't think she's been better than anybody ever, except for she can lift more. That's all that she's better in. <laughs> Cynthia's got an ego. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> Roxy does not mind that she has an ego. <laughs> Roxy doesn't have one. <laughs> it's probably better for her. <laughs> Egos only hurt you. All right. That's cool. I am I don't have any conditions. I'm gonna take potential. And actually that means I fall on my track again. Woo. I've re- been rolling like shit lately. Um, How many advancements are you up to? Lately. Mm. It's been a lot of talking. But thank you everyone mm. for joining us tonight. <sighs> we will be back on Thursday with more Clockwork Chronicles. Um. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Watch my character have more emotional turmoil. Yeah. Emotional turmoil for everyone. It's yeah. fine. You get emotional turmoil. It's you fine. get emotional turmoil. I can't wait for my emotional turmoil. I'll break you. <laughs> Until we see you again. Bye-bye. Bye.